ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you can feel the rumbling in the ground, in the air. The chill is coming from nowhere. And that's because on the St. Clair College campus, all the heat in the immediate area is being absorbed because we have another Battle of Windsor brewing in the Nexus. It is the St. Clair College Academy League of Legends team versus the University of Windsor Lancers in their NACE Star League. We're in the regular season, and both of these teams are on a tear and want to show what they're capable of here. And of course, whenever these teams face off against each other, we make sure that we ship them on a bus, send them over here, and we put on a show for all of you to enjoy. You're joining me now today. I am Daniil, also known as Better McGee, being joined by the one and only illustrious... Gabriel, aka Blockbeat. And uh, today, well, we're hopping straight into draft so you guys don't get to see us beforehand. Uh, and looking at this draft, it's actually pretty straightforward. The Aesol, the Karma, and the Viego being ah. banned... Um, Karma really strong mid lane pick. So is Aesol right now. Um, Karma see, be even seeing some play in pro play. Um, Viego just generally being good with his resets on his ultimate uh, in that mid game. So really terrifying pick to go up against. A really nice ban coming out. Uh, on the side of you, Windsor here banning the Kane. Uh, as we all know, Kane is just generally speaking annoying to go up against. Nobody likes going up against Kane. Um, just, I mean, I don't know. It, immortality, <laughs> healing, that gets be to choose problem. between two different classes. Basically. It's it generally annoying. Uh, the Swain being picked out and the Smolder being manned out too. But hey, uh, just, picks now. Yeah, I mean, pretty good bands, but on the picks, Yasuo, uh, pretty good pick to start I off. I don't think I've seen them play Yasuo all season. Maybe they've played it off stream. Maybe. Every time we've seen them, I cannot say I've even seen a single Yasuo, not even among Varsity. So um, I'm interested to see what their theory behind this pick is. Maybe they just want to be flashy. Maybe they just want to show that they can <laughs> do those combo dashes and all that cool stuff. But in any case, you Windsor picking up Sivir and Maokai in response. Those are also some pretty solid picks. I remember you were telling me how much you love seeing Maokai. Maokai is just the most balanced and fair champion. You love it to death. And yeah. Sivir also really strong <laughs> Balanced well. and fair. Maybe more like broken and unbalanced. <laughs> He's a tree. He's got to be strong. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, severe Maokai or Maokai and insert ADC name here <laughs> is a very, very strong combo uh, right now, although they did get nerfed this patch. Oh. Uh, the Aatrox coming out too to Wombo Combo with the Yasuo and the Rakan. So yeah, I mean, we have three Airborns on the side of St. Clair College here. Uh, so pretty terrifying. Yasuo's brother though, Yone, coming out on pick three here uh, for you, Windsor, is kind of an interesting pick here. Uh, I don't know if that's... It, it's a good flex, because you can flex it top or bot, so it's kind of hard... Uh, top or mid, not bot. Jeez, don't play Yone ADC, people. Uh, don't. Do it, it doesn't work. I'm gonna uh, do it. Oh, god. Uh, but in terms of the bans, the J4 ban coming out, I guess they're trying to lock down uh, even more pot potential airborns uh, for that Yasuo. But right now, the comp on the St. Clair College side does seem to be centered around funneling partially the Yasuo because um, of those airborns. I wouldn't be surprised here if uh, UNs are either bans or St. Clair picks a Diana. Uh, just really good jungler with uh, Yasuo. And here, I mean, the Syndra ban coming out. Okay, so Syndra. I guess that, yeah, they probably assume that Yone is topside. Potentially. I mean, I, I feel like if they're on the side of you, Windsor, if they're going to pick a top laner, I think he'd want it to be a little bit, some, something with a little bit more substance, something that can handle a little bit more heat. I feel like Yone might be a little bit too squishy to handle the pressure that the Saints are already laying down, especially playing against an Aatrox. Might be a little bit difficult. I'm not sure. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, even a Fizz ban coming out, okay, that is weird. Uh, <laughs> that is really, I specifically asked you, like, you yeah, think you're going to see Fizz? Like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, Yone, I mean, they, they're they assuming this Yone is topside, which is completely plausible. Yone has been playing top lately a lot, mm. but against Aatrox, it's kind of hard to play that lane, because I mean, you get bullied a lot, right? Aatrox has a lot more health and healing. Regarding the, uh, the Fizz ban... Uh, maybe the Saints are looking for two squishy last picks. Maybe they're ADC Possibly, as well yeah. as a jungler. Um, in terms of squishy junglers, who do you think might even fit that role here? I can't imagine you'd want to go for anything other than conventional, you know, like Vi, maybe even Gregus. I feel like they, they're they they're wanting for a little bit more initiation on the side of the Saints, I'm feeling. 
Yeah, engage is definitely something that wouldn't be terrible here. The brand, though, yeah, You'd magic damage was band. lacking. So, yeah, the brand jungle coming out here, a really good pick. Uh, good against the Wukong, too, because uh, he can just kind of chill, throw out his insane damage yeah. and just AoE the whole team. So if they group up, they're screwed. And then the Kai'Sa here coming out, generally squishy, uh, fulfills the role that we were looking for, though. I mean, 200 years of collective experience. What can I say, right? Um, Kai'Sa is just a generally good staple ADC to pick here. And against Sivir, she has a lot of options. But that Maokai will be a little bit of a pain. It's hard mm -hmm. to do much because the Maokai it just has so much prior in lane right now that if Rakan dashes even just a little bit, he's locked down for at least two seconds. And it's a lot of time for Sivir to cook, right? Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side, Kaisa doesn't really have much that she can hit, right? You can't really get an engage because there's a black shield from Sivir. So it's going to be a farming lane from what I can tell on the bot lane. What I would really look out for is probably going to be the Aatrox, which seems to be topside. And uh, going up against that Yone. And then the Wukong in the jungle is going to be interesting to see how he plays that out if he prioritizes top side or bot side. Because if he prioritizes bot side, right, he's probably just taking a coin flip here. Because you... Those lanes ideally speaking are just going to be stuck in the middle because they're both just going to be clearing they can't really take a fight i ideally you want to set up a freeze because then you have priority for the, your jungler to gank mm -hmm. but it's it's going to be hard to set that up because you can't fight and now after we've looked at these drafts we can see both of these teams looking fierce and looking like they're ready for some intense league of legends action we have the st Clair saints in the beautiful red and the red lighting and you just saw the u lance uh university of windsor lancers in the blue lighting again we love to make things flashy for you here so even <laughs> color coding well. the venue and now you're finally going to get to see your hosts for tonight and yes. we're going to be joining you through all of the action but you know when you were just talking about the composition there i did want to pick your brain a little bit i feel like you can tell a lot about the strategy that the teams want to try employ try to employ going forward into their games mm -hmm. um, based off of their last pick and i'm curious what you think you did touch on the kaisa a little bit but i'm curious what you think that vex brings to the table that's a that's a champion that's past my time for sure yeah so okay so vex game is Vex is basically a counter to dashes. Think Poppy, uh, but instead like of Poppy saying sit down, Vex is a champion that if you dash onto her, she fears you. Uh, okay. In in essence, there's a little bit more to it, but kinda. yeah, she's anti dash, anti assassin type thing. That might interfere um, with the Yasuo quite a bit. Yeah, basically the point of that is to stop the whole Yasuo funnel. Um, but the fact that we didn't see the Diana it kind of shows that they're willing to kind of split away from the Yasuo once mm -hmm. they saw kind of where their comp was going to. Um, so yeah, with the Wukong engage, it'll be kind of scary, and Saints might actually want to play on the reaction, so get engaged on, and then mm -hmm. just let Bran cook everyone, Aatrox with World Ender is, well, he's just gonna stay alive, let's be honest, that's Aatrox, um, and then afterwards your Kai'Sa can do kaisa things dashing whatever dps mm -hmm. everything's gonna die around her and well assuming of course she's in a good spot at that time of the fight um in terms of the mid lane mm -hmm. so the yasuo is gonna have to play he's gonna have a lot of airborne options to then alt into the fight you want as many as you can get so. yeah you want a lot of options but it's really gonna fall down to landing the right alt because if he ults the wrong person and then the What's airborne the cool doesn't on that work these days. The like the cooldown isn't long. Okay. It's probably around a minute, give or take. I mean, that's for, a long for a team. Fight. It's long. You want to know? You're gonna do it on. You the get right one person. per team right. fight. Yeah. Yeah. That's essentially the idea there. Um, but the Yasuo ultimate needs to be like well placed because if it messes up, then well your Aatrox isn't gonna deal as much damage, right? Because it shreds armor too during that alt. Mm, um, okay. the Aatrox might go lethality though. It might be a Bruiser. It might be a lethality Aatrox. Lethality Aatrox is what they're playing at uh, the LCK right now. Um, and just generally speaking in those bigger regions so we might see the lethality Aatrox come out okay but I mean the Rakan if the Rakan can get a really good engage they have great follow-up and I, I, I like that you're going down that path because one of the things I was thinking about and uh, I just looking at the drafts overall and one thing you mentioned about how University of Winter is gonna probably have to be playing into the Saints I think you can tell that by their draft uh, I feel like 
University of Windsor might be a little bit more uh, centralized on one or two champions, where I feel like the same system of draft is a little bit more malleable. I feel like if their bottom lanes is going to go wrong, then they'd be like, okay, Brand and uh, Brand and Aatrox, you guys, this game's on you. Or yeah, Yasuo, King Kukum, Yasuo Brand, King, Yasuo, yeah. this game's on you guys. Then bottom lane, or if uh, top lane gets kind of you know pushed in, because like you mentioned, University of Windsor's going to be able to decide whether or not they kind of want to completely screw over the bottom or the top lane here. Mid might not, maybe not so much, because Yasuo is pretty mobile at the beginning of the game. A little bit but, too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like the Saints are going to be able to adapt pretty easily to whatever lane really gets shafted to start off with. And then they can basically play play the rest of the game with that one champion, one or two champions in mind, and while the other guy is catching up, and even though they kind of lost out in the beginning of the game, I feel like they can still have a really solid path to recovery, as long as the Saints make sure that they're not taking any unnecessary engagements. Um, this is a concept in most MOBAs that you know, yeah. I'm more familiar with, where you, you really are super happy to see that your opponent has to take the initiative, because yeah. especially... You know, obviously these teams are really good, but when you're really at the top of the top, like, you know, teams playing in LCS, that's where you're totally fine and comfortable, you know, playing it to your point because you know exactly how you want to do it, when, and exactly for what reasons, and if this goes wrong, what they're going to do this instead. You already know that ahead of the time. But, you know, when you're slightly lower than that, where, you know, you're still one of the best college teams, maybe, you're not quite LCS level, then not needing to play into your opponent just makes you less mistakes to make, right? Yeah. Um, if you're just waiting for your opponent to basically mess up and you're just farming the whole time just recovering making sure they're not completely walking all over you then it's a lot easier simpler of a game plan so the simpler your game plan is the better usually uh, and i feel like the saints game plan is relatively simple whatever lane loses we focus on the other two and we're gonna have a nice happy time and speaking of nice happy times it's a nice happy time for you it's a nice happy time for me and it's a nice happy time for the audience at home as the battle of windsor is getting underway we are starting game one of the St. Clair College Academy League of Legends team versus the University of Windsor Lancers League of Legends team. And we are getting started off strong here. We can see the Kaisa from their POV making their way to the bottom lane. And this game is getting started. Yeah, so as you can see here, Brand seems to be wanting to start on his uh, blue side. So he's going to opt to actually play around that bot lane. Um, probably hoping that the Sivir with her bush can just get a big push in and then that hopefully Kaisa and Rakan can hold down that freeze mm -hmm. so that when they get to bot side then they win that one and yeah Wukong here seems to be doing a three camp into bot side too so both junglers pathing bot side we might see a scuttle fight coming out soon um, in like the next few minutes and then in the mid lane, it's going to be kind of interesting. As Oh, hold on here. Rakan gets an airborne on too. Kai'Sa procs the sacks, but they're all on Maokai, so it doesn't deal that much damage with the Aftershock clearing up those resistances. But a big burst of damage onto Maokai, not ideal. Um, they need to play a little bit more safe, ideally, but you can't really do much. I mean, Rakan does have a lot of dashes, right? So mm -hmm. at some point, he's just going to dash in and you're gonna get damaged of course the pots do end up getting used by Sivir here uh maokai seems to be ping is that maokai or is it uh yeah maokai pinging for vision in that uh, pixel bush and wukong is around the area yeah you know, they could be trying to make a play early on level two i'm not gonna figure out how too effective it is but maokai already getting leap off wukong dashing in as well but the rakan's gonna knock them up and walk away the saints first gank not entirely going the way they wanted it to no, that first gank definitely makes things a lot harder now because, well, your Wukong went, yeah, three camps. So red, blue, and Gromperton uh, into a gank means that now he has to, he basically just wasted a ton of time, right? Because he, now he didn't get a gank or, well, he did get the gank, but he didn't get any kills. He didn't get set his bot lane ahead. They had to use mana for that. And if you look at the mana levels, right, uh, Sivir only has one cookie left and Kaisa, I mean, her health is a little bit lower, but it's not that significant as we can see here. Bran actually showing up on the vision for the uh, blue team. He's going to go pick up that scuttle in the bot side as a hold on here. Maokai does get the engage off of the Kaisa. Kaisa procs all stacks. Going to pop the Maokai instantly. Bran showing up, dealing some damage onto the Sivir. The Q is going to miss and Sivir gets away with a sliver of health. Still burning away. A sliver of Sivir. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but yeah, Kaisa did take a lot of damage in that engage though. So... Uh... Gonna have to back there. That's not an ideal wave, though. It is, uh, actually, yeah, the wave is pretty fine. 
Wow, that is a big shop. Holy smokes. Um, but yeah, as we can see here, he also isn't actually having a great time uh, against a Vex. Of course, Vex kind of being an anti-dash type of champion. Um, but with that being said, when you're looking at anti-dash champions, uh, yeah, Yasuo is pretty much like what you want the most. Um, but here, how is Aatrox doing? That would be my question. Uh, That's actually what I was going to mention. Like, usually, I mean, just, just as business as usual, top lane kind of just chilling. They're doing their own thing, and oh. not a lot of action is going to be carried out from the rest of the squad. We're getting our first pause here. Uh, seems the audio broke on mid lane, apparently. That's, oh, that's what nice. uh, someone's saying there. But, you know, this gives you more time to explain, you know, how this game's going for both these teams. I know you always love to break things down into those fine little details and hey you know what <laughs> i love bringing the second perspective because i think you know there's a lot of different ways that this game could go and based off of what we've seen so far that initial gank um from that wukong i feel like you wins there if they weren't able to get that pressure off to start i feel like they might struggle a little bit down the line yeah so basically what happens is when you're clearing as a jungler mm -hmm. uh you have a few choices and where you're clearing dictates basically your entire game, right? Because your start means, okay, this is how I'm going to have to clear for the rest or I have to reset camps. And resetting camps is a big no-no because that means that you're losing gold per second, right? Right. Um, so what happens is the Wukong skink failed. And then because of that, you end up having a complete loss in gold. All he So he had to walk from blue buff, mm -hmm. or from Gromp, all the way down to bot lane. And then from bot lane all the way back up to his um, wolves. That's a big loss of time. And yeah. you can see here, Brand picking up the uh, the grub nuggets just because, I mean, he, right now Wukong doesn't have priority, right? He can't really do anything. He's still clearing bot side. Um, and Brand, his clear was slower, right? I, th I believe he did go for a full clear here. Uh, but what happens is he can do his full clear. He has a lot of AoE, so it's relatively fast. Uh, and then he came back bot right he was clearing the same um direction but his clear was slower but also capitalized on all his camps mm -hmm. versus wukong who had his camps do pretty much nothing for him um and had to be essentially now pathing top side and now he has weird timers on everything this is one uh, of the uh, sorry this is one of the side effects here that you're mentioning yep. of the control that university of Windsor is probably going to have over the arena here uh they're probably going to have to trade objectives like you mentioned the saints already getting the void grubs now you Windsor just trading it out they're going to get the first dragon and i feel like the implications of this could be felt uh earlier on this game i believe the earth dragon that means you're doing more damage to the towers am i correct uh no so earth dragon is more resistances which is really okay. good for tanks uh Beautiful. But here in the tank department, uh, Wukong, Maokai, <laughs> that's about it. I mean, I, I guess, if anything, it just means you're depriving the Saints of having a strong tank, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, or getting that extra tank. Yeah, it's, I know? believe it's like 3 or 4% bonus armor and MR. So it's not significant, but it is a number as a whole. <laughs> Wukong tries to go for a gank, but won't. <laughs> Although Maokai was shadowing that gank, ready to follow up on it. Uh -oh. uh, uh, yeah, man, Maokai's in trouble. He will not be going... Oh, maybe he... Okay, Maokai might actually be going in here oh, onto the Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa was overextended. The Airborne coming out. Yasuo ultimate onto three people. It's going to deal a lot of damage as Bran goes down to... Uh, takes out Wukong. Yasuo takes out Maokai. And a lot of damage is being dealt here onto the Sivir who will fall to Yasuo and uh, make that another one. Yasuo takes out his oh, wow. Vex. Yikes. Absolutely popping off here. The Saints Yasuo players doing a lot of work to keep the Saints help, happy, healthy, and in the game. Saints are looking 5-0 and oh against University of Windsor. Yeah. I didn't even notice. I feel like these kills have just been slowly popping up one by one, you know, kind of floating in under the radar. And uh, obviously, they add up. This is more space for the Saints to be able to play comfortably and get the farm on basically all of their carries. We were kind of worried that the Saints are going to be struggling a little bit and have their lane kind of lose out one by one, but right now, they're definitely taking control. Yeah, I was scared because, I mean, Yasuo against Vex is kind of a counter pick ish mm -hmm. It's like a soft counter pick, right? Yep. Um, and wave clear wise Sivir did have the advantage, which means she can clear waves and then go help for drag uh, a lot faster than the Kaisa can. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that battle for Scuttle basically, I mean, they got four kills on that one fight. 
and that's kind of insane. Although, hold on here, they, they, there has been a kill back. I don't think we saw that It was that the Yone uh, onto somebody. <laughs> I know that much. Probably on the Aatrox then. Um, yep. Solo kill in the top lane, which to be honest, kind of makes sense. Yone into Aatrox is just really annoying as the uh, the Aatrox, because you, you can do something, but he has too many dashes, you can't land your Qs, right? Mm -hmm. um, so playing Aatrox is basically just farming simulator 20-whatever, um, and trying to get as much CS as possible so that when you do group, you're mm -hmm. strong enough. Um, I would like to see his build, though, because he sh I think it might be a um, a bruiser Aatrox in this case, because lethality He might centered. be getting bruised himself, though, as they're making the rush onto him. The Saints are going to be able to get the pick off onto the Yone, returning the kill. Six to one now is the score line, and the Saints are very happy about it. You know, uh, I think that they're going to be very happy with the way things are going for them in this game so far. And I, I wanted to ask, you know, I know, at very least, Yone is Yasuo's brother, but yes. is he? What's, what does he bring to the table team composition-wise? Uh, so Yasuo, team composition-wise, will basically... Yone. Uh, oh, Yone. Yeah. Bleh, not Yasuo. Everybody knows what Yasuo does. <laughs> yes. Uh, Yone, uh, I mean, usually my answer would be it's Yone. Uh, mm. But Yone, good split push, good team fight because he has AoE airborns. Okay. Um, or sorry, Yone, just generally speaking, has a lot of AoE. Amongst which are airborns. Uh, he can do the ADC's job. He can do the tank's job. He can do the mid laner's job. He can do the jungler's job. Um, I think you're starting to get the picture here. Yeah, I see. <laughs> very, very versatile, flexible champion that if you left to his own devices will become a problem. And I think that's exactly what the top lane is for. And he's doing a good job at it so far. Already forcing a rotation from three, or I think, yeah, three or four Saints were up there in the top lane just to put a stop to that snowball, put a little bit of heat on it, get a, get a hot lamp and just put it in his face. But still, in terms of objective and map control, I feel like the Saints might be in a comfortable spot again already with the brand rotation. I believe Yone had to flash out there or use another mobility technique to get behind the tower and Brand is just gonna have to, you know, make his way away, get out of there. But it seems like they're still trying to push up against him. Either way, Yone is not in a good spot. It's gonna have to be uh force. Might get the dope, actually. It depends. But yeah, uh, definitely depends. Uh, but now, as we're seeing some of the plays around the map, I feel like Kaisa might be in a pretty good spot to be, you know, a threat for the mid to late game. How do you see this going? Uh, Kaisa, mm, I don't know. She's definitely going to be strong late game because uh, there's enough squishies. Like, the squishies are squishy enough that she can pop them with her passive really easily. Mm. But at the same time, they're like the tank. Or they don't have tank enough bruisers to really be a threat to Kaisa. Because, like, if there's, like, pure tanks, right? To Kaisa, that's a threat. Because 15% really isn't enough, given the fact that it's missing health mm. uh, damage on her passive. But, um... I'd be scared if Kaisa got locked down by Maokai. But other than Kaisa getting locked down, there isn't much. The Wukong could actually get something that could done be a problem yeah. yeah he could just with the like we're looking the stealth we're looking at things like it's a bit in a bit of a vacuum you know kaisa versus this kaisa versus that but realistically you're going to be dealing with a lot of different issues at the same time and i feel like in the in the chaos of a team fight we saw how that first fight engagement went but speaking of there's a little bit of a kerfuffle there <laughs> at the um bottom tower for blue team but in any case again uh like the these the chaos that can endure during a team fight you might even end up hitting and locking down the the kaisa without even trying you know like it could just be a, a like a remnant of the fact that everybody's so close to each other there's a lot of aoe there's a lot of crowd control but there's an engagement in the top side here the atrox versus yone fight is breaking out and it seems that yona yone is going to be able to do a lot of damage here and force them to retreat just a little bit uh both of them being able to heal and shield themselves up enough so it's not really going to matter too much in the end but at the very least it is going to cause a little bit of stress and remind you that you have to put your mind on but still gonna have to retreat behind the tower Ooh. coming back up for a little bit two knockoffs is going to go his way. Yone, still a threat. Even though he's low, going to see if he can find anything, knocking him up himself, but still, things have kind of reset to a little bit of a neutral. Yeah, here, if Aatrox can, like, find an opportunity to take a fight, he wins that all-in, all for sure, just through sheer health advantage. But Aatrox is playing this lane really, really well, as 
we're seeing an attempted gank possibly in the bot lane here, but nothing's mm -hmm. gonna come out of it. Kaisa playing. I mean, she's freezing. Oh no, she's not freezing. Never mind. She will be backing, so she's gonna push that wave. Uh, but yeah, she just. What are they doing? They're on vision. They know that, right? <laughs> Maybe. I don't think they do. Okay, so actually yeah, gonna cancel her back. Gonna land the uh, Void Seeker here. They gotta play carefully because she can just dash in there. Nah, don't play carefully. Play like you don't care at all. Play brave and powerfully. It might That's not go you your way, but at least you'll feel killed. good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Die a hero. But, you know, I wanted to ask, what do you feel is going right for both of these teams here? Uh, right now, looking at the score, mm -hmm. uh, going right, Aatrox no TP. I guess that could be one thing as Aatrox does TP straight into lane here. Um, so future team fight could be going Looks like they're kind of way. setting up around the Rift Herald on both yep. teams here. Wukong contesting a little bit, the brand and Rakan. Yasuo is in the area as well, so is Vex and Maokai. Looks like something here could uh, get started. Yeah, and maybe even we might see the Kai'Sa actually walk up there, although I would be surprised. Uh, oh yeah, no, she is pathing over there. Uh, as Woo, hold on. The Airborne actually kind of Buffer timers the Maokai W here on Rakan, so kind of canceling a an engage. Brand going to pick up that Rift Herald without much of a fight. Like they were, they were kind of showing their teeth, but I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bark no bite, I guess. I'll, Maybe. I'll teeth no bite. <laughs> These uh, it's just two. Have uh, you ever seen that video of those two dogs behind the fence, just like yeah, yelling each at each other? other? And the fence gets open, and they kind of like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think this one might have just happened there. They yeah. they called each other on their bluffs at the same time, but realized that they were both bluffing and kind of just stepped off of that. And Rift Herald is going to... Oh, actually, no. The Saints did get the Rift Herald. Yep. My mistake. But, you know, a, a fight didn't break out as a result. Yeah, there was, uh, there was no fight for that Herald. So every Void objective has been pretty much uncontested for the Saints here. They have all six Grubbies, um, and they have the Herald, which is probably going to be dropped... I'm going to assume mid just to open up that area, but it could be bot too, just to kind of free up their ADC, depending on uh, tower damage too. But yeah, Kai'Sa, in terms of CS, 145 at 15 minutes. We are talking borderline perfect CS. Wow. Expect nothing less of the Saints. 10 CS per minute is insane. As Ooh, hold on here. Rift Herald will be dropped, doing a little bit of drifting. Uh, gonna run into that tower, spawn in a bunch of Voidlings. But the TP will actually come out from Yone to try and uh, stop the tower from being taken. As, ooh, they're playing around Pixel Bush. There is no vision in that bush. The quickness getting popped by Rakan. He's gonna try and go in onto that Maokai, but the Maokai is no longer there. Kaiser just gonna leave that fight. Not even worth her time. CS is worth more than kills, apparently. <laughs> um, as, yeah. Wukong, oh, wait, Wukong can't do anything. Well, Maokai, committed. Twisted Advance does come out, but not going to find anyone. Kaisa getting some damage onto the Maokai, bringing him to a uh, three-quarters health, but not going to do much. Aside from that, doesn't even get to proc her passive. As yet, yeah, here, uh, they kind of just have to back, right? Yeah, I mean, there's too much pressure. They're, they're playing so carefully, and y you have to understand that it makes very much sense, even though the Saints have a lot of kills from the early game, but... You know, it's these are kills from the early game, right? So far, they're having no more kills past maybe like the the seven or eight minute mark. Oh. It's been completely even from then on, and I feel like yeah, the Saints are getting another objective. I feel like they're still in relative control of the map, but I feel like despite the scoreline, University wins are still very close. So the next engagement, whoever kind of comes out on top, will have a huge advantage going forward. Yeah, as oh, we see a gank here coming out. Wukong going to pop the ultimate. Oh. So does Yone, but World Ender tries to get out, but Aatrox just can't. As Yone, uh, or I think that was a Wukong Q actually, comes out and bunks him on the head. Um, so yeah, gold advantage is St. Clair's side here. Um, so it's kind of hard to take any fights for objectives if you are um, the opposing team, but. There is kind of like a silver lining here. The Yone is scaling, and I don't know what build Yone is going for, but it might, uh, he might be going for something centered partially bruiser. Uh, so it might be a little terrifying as a hold on here. Vex getting caught out, going to get, oh, okay. Takes a lot of damage from the Yasuo and will end up falling to him. Yeah, 3v1 is not ideal. Wukong just gonna stick to his Raptors here. Gonna actually have to smite to protect it. 
uh, yeah, that uh, that area is just not the best to be in. I don't know why they were there. As there's a fight on the top side. Brand gonna solo kill the Yone. Okay. Ah, uh, that's not supposed to happen, but it did, which is kind of interesting. I'm Brand is a mage. <laughs> How did he take out Mr. 400 Years Yone? I'm confused. Uh, with passion, belief, and friendship. That's always the answer, Gabe. You should know this. And the power of Toasty. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we kind of got interrupted by things going wrong for both teams, but I still want to go down the line of reasoning here. What's going right for both of these teams? Because I feel like if we have insight into what is a success, we can see how they're going to try capitalizing off of those and make their game better. Because right now, one thing I can say for sure is a success is... Kaisa. Kaisa is having a fantastic game so far, especially when we kind of expected things to be a little bit difficult for her. Sivir is also doing really decently as well, only about 10 CS behind. One death on the board as well, but again, um, with the pressure that the Saints are mounting up, kind of have to expect that. In any case, uh, Kaisa is in a lot better position thanks to the team being so powerful and potent on the side of the Saints during, during this early to mid game. But as we're heading into the mid late slash late game, uh, I feel like what, what are the things that are going right right now that will have an effect on how this game kind of plays out going forward? Realistically speaking or not realistically speaking? Both. <laughs> okay, realistically speaking, uh, Saints won this one. Okay. Just through leads and how they're playing it. Yeah, I mean, we can see here. The Kaisa just absolutely but bursted the Sivir. And will actually alt and take her out, but even no though the Maokai's feeling. Up. Yeah, no one's there to follow up. I feel like, yeah, they're going to get the Maokai as well. If there was just a couple more members of E-Windsor there, that really could have been bad for the Saints losing their Kaisa's advantage. But instead, it's going to go two kills now for the Saints. And like I mentioned before, things were pretty even uh, just a bit ago. And whoever the engagements kind of went, that team would have a huge advantage going forward. And I feel like right now, the Saints are going to be that team taking those engagements and getting a huge advantage. And they're going to be in a pretty good spot in the next, you know, five to 10 minutes for taking control. But they did just lose Kaisa. So oh. <laughs> never oh, mind, no. baby. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, yeah, losing, that's probably going to be a pretty big shutdown on the Kaisa, actually. Is, ooh, Yoni wants to go in on the Aatrox. It's just so Krugs, but she just won't get it. Um, but yeah. Gold advantage is on the side uh, of St. Clair here. I mean, it's just straightforward, 10 to three. You can't really sugarcoat that one. Uh, Aatrox is on his first item going Eclipse. So I think he might be going for a lethality mm. build, um, which has been the one that's mostly been used in those higher level competitions. Um, win condition here, if... Hmm. Win condition, if you're the Saints, it's probably going to be centered around your Kaisa. Probably. That's Ooh, hold on here. We got a fight agency. actually coming out on the top side jungle for red team as Yone will go down to Brand immediately. Or Yone oh, will take out enough. Brand immediately. Aatrox is next. Yeah, Aatrox is next, but this time it's Vex. Okay, Vex did get the shutdown onto Kaisa, so she does have a lot of gold right now. Um, so that would explain a little bit of a power spike coming from that side. And that trade, I mean, I was kind of saying that like, the game was lost where at that first scuttle crab fight but now what we're seeing is the sivir is kind of coming online right she needs her 60 percent crit chance to really do much or at least three items right um because she needs that consistent crit but getting to that consistent crit is kind of difficult and we're kind of seeing that here right now that more crit she gets more terrifying she becomes as yeah you also here gonna actually get ganked uh, as he was side laning. Sivir gonna pick up that kill. That's a shutdown. That's a 600 gold shutdown. Uh, heading straight to Sivir, so that's gonna be terrifying to go up against uh, in those later parts of the game and those fights going onwards. As here, I believe they're gonna be taking the uh, Hextech Drake off of that, but no, Vex will take the Rock on out. Brand takes out the the Sivir, Kaisa takes out the uh, the Maokai, and yeah, just as he's spinning, Wukong's gonna go down to Brand, and Kaisa's gonna pick up the Yone kill here, and that gives. Oh, hold on, I was gonna say that gives the Drake to Saint Clair. It does get the Drake to Saint Clair. Vex flashing Beautiful. in, but doesn't get the kill onto the Kaisa. I mean, I hate to admit you're right, Gabe, but it is looking like the Saints might be taking this game by the reins and just going full on the gas taking this one for it because all the, basically a team wipe if not a full team wipe plus 
most of those kills going to your Kaisa plus getting all these turrets, it's going to be pretty difficult for University of Windsor to recover from this. Uh, University of Windsor just has no priority right now. They can't play, period. They don't get to play right now. If if Saints are playing well, they can't. They're not allowed to play because this should, in theory, uh, get followed up into a Baron or one pick and then a Baron because there's absolutely no reason Saints don't win that fight. They're 15 to seven. And that gold advantage is at least 2,000. Um, like bare minimum from what I can tell. So vision is going to be what Saints need to play around. And that's what they need to worry about. But other than that, they can just engage whatever fight they want. And if they force a fight, they just they can't do anything. Yeah. Boys are just going to roll on them, period. Potentially, but in any case, like the... the the Baron could be the next big focus for both of these teams here, and I feel like that's kind of going to be where everything is decided. I feel like whichever team is able to... I feel like it would be indicative more of who's in control of the game rather than just getting Baron. I feel like if you're even able to win that Baron fight, I think you're in a pretty good position to be winning the game. Yeah, Baron is going to get a lot of pressure, but the Quickness actually being popped by Rakan, but not actually going to land that charm onto Sivir. Maokai going to lock down the Yasuo, but going to die for it as the Kai'Sa just deals too much damage. The Wukong ultimate will come out, but will result in absolutely nothing as Brand takes him out. Sivir does get a kill back onto Rakan, but Kai'Sa gets one, gets two, both the Sivir and the Flex yeah. falling. Yone Another. dashes in, but gets killed by Aatrox, and yeah, I mean, that's just, it's, it's over. That tier two is going to fall. Probably the tier three. No, they don't even. They don't even bother with the tier three. Going straight to Baron, and with that Baron buff, uh, it's probably going to be on Rakan too, uh, as he's coming back really soon. And yeah, I mean Kaisa's going to melt that Baron. And the only thing is though, they don't have a smite, but that doesn't really matter since the other smite is also gone. <laughs> True. Um, so Kaisa's probably just going to deal enough damage to not have to worry about the Wukong. But yeah, Baron does get taken out. 300 gold to the entirety of the Saints, uh, or each Saint. And <laughs> yeah, there's not really a comeback angle from here. The drag is coming up in two minutes, and this is soul point two. So they're forced to fight a uh, fed team that has extra uh, damage due to Baron. It's just rough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your towers have pretty much all fallen, so you have no priority. On well, the plus side, they, they did get that mid tower, but they just... <sighs> U Windsor just doesn't have much they can play around right now. There's there's nothing... Like, the Sivir can deal damage, mm -hmm. but she's just getting rushed down by the Yasuo, by the um, the brand. Well, not really the brand. The brand's just melting her front line. Um, but yeah, the Yasuo, the Aatrox are just get, doing everything they can to get to the Sivir. And they leave whatever the hell is behind them to Kaisa. And well, Kaisa's a wall of damage. Whatever gets within her auto attack range dies. Period. It's just how it is, right? And, and another thing that kind of really makes it look bleak is I feel like that last fight really was executed pretty well by University of Windsor. Like, yeah. they got off the abilities that they wanted to, they got it off on who they wanted it to, but they just don't have the, the potency, damage. right, to kind of make it work. And it's not even on the draft, it's just the gap between the Saints versus University of Windsor is just too wide right now. And I don't think they're gonna be able to close that gap fast enough to, well, before their Nexus falls. Maybe if you give them a couple other extra years, then they might be able to pull it off, but just at this rate, it's not gonna go. I mean, scaling-wise, they don't win, and yeah, early this the problem with the team composition here is that Windsor doesn't have a really, really strong point at any point in the game. They just have a decent draft, generally speaking. Like a Sivir is scary late game, but at the same time, she's not that terrifying. Like you tell me, Smolder late game versus Sivir, Even the Smolder guy. I'm gonna be scared of the Smolder. You tell me the Kaisa late game versus Sivir, I'm going to be scared of the Kaisa. Sivir is kind of just like, yeah, okay, she's scary, but we know how to deal with her. All she does is auto attack, right? Mm. And gives some movement speed to her team. But like, you know, year gap, basically, uh, or release date gap when it comes to those champions, because Sivir just doesn't really have that 200 years experience type of um, damage behind her is, yeah, Aatrox, you're going to pick off the Wukong even. So that's, yeah, that's instant soul for Saints. 
no contest, no nothing. It was just the Wukong maybe trying to steal. Uh, but wait, Sivir is in the top jungle for the Saints. What? What is she doing there? Oh no, she's not in the top. Well, she is now, but she. Well, oh, Aatrox is over there now too. <laughs> that's yeah. That's so uh, and yeah. so is Kaisa. And now uh, Sivir's not there anymore. So she finally got out eventually. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know how I was telling you that assassins aren't meta. Uh, Kaisa is the exception to the rule because <laughs> she well, just flew Kaisa. halfway across the map and killed somebody yeah. instantly. I didn't know. Well, that she was landed possible. Void Seeker. That's all she needed, and then she just alts and absolutely destroys uh, the Sivir because she's well, squishy. And well, yeah. Now we can see the towers are falling. Uh, so are the inhibitors, and I think that's going to be game actually. Yeah, uh, I think Sivir on cooldown, Maokai on cooldown. They're protecting that tier t that tier three though. Are they are they going to Oh okay, they will try and take out that tier three, try and go for the double inhibitor play. Maybe they don't think they can end here, as Aatrox will go in. Maokai trying to lock him down, won't get much. Aatrox takes out the turret as Yasuo takes both Maokai and Wukong. Sivir gonna kill Bran and Rakan, but Kaisa gonna pick up the Yasuo. Aatrox picking up the Sivir and the Vex will uh, pretty much wrap up that game, game as, yeah. Oh, tier, sure. uh, turret 1, turret 2, both Nexus turrets will fall, and yeah, the Nexus soon after. Yep, and that's the game for game 1. St. Clair College Academy League of Legends team, they're going to take it over University of Windsor Lancers in quite an unexpected fashion from both of us. I, I think we were both on the same page that this game wasn't going to be that easy for the Saints based off of the composition. Uh, their game plan was a lot simpler, yes. um, but if executed well enough, the University of Windsor lineup would have been able to kind of just roll over the Saints one. And I feel like uh, the best way to put it, it's, uh, it's the elegance of simplicity. For example, the, the only real, the best way I could put it, there's a Tekken character, Lars. That character, it's super straightforward. You do 10 good things really well, you win the game. Maybe not be the best character, but very simple to do, very easy. Yeah. Anyone can do it. But if you're playing against somebody who knows how to deal with it, you might struggle. But if you're playing a character that's a lot more technical, hard, unwieldy, difficult to manage, then even if you're the better player, you might not be able to execute the game plan that yeah. you have in mind. So I feel like the University of Windsor's game plan, while they're still very skilled players overall, it just might have been a little bit too difficult to execute that game plan against a team of equally skilled players. Yeah, I mean, the game plan was get the Sivir ahead, and if the Sivir doesn't get ahead, mm -hmm. let Yone do Yone things. Uh, but Yone didn't do Yone things. <laughs> so when Yone doesn't do Yone things and Sivir isn't, well, DPSing, what do you have left? You got the shutdown yeah. on the Kai'Sa with the Vex. You got Wukong doing the spins in their backline. And again, like they were executing that very well. Yeah. It's just, it was too late. They, yeah, it was they, too late. they just didn't have the damage behind. Like, you saw there was a few engages there where Wukong goes in. Boom. Three people and, in the air. Yeah, three right. people in the air. And then... Nothing. <laughs> Yone ultimate coming around anytime soon. Vex ultimate could be huge here. Split those people up with a fear or, you know, Sivir dealing damage would be cool. And then there's, there's, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. The Kaisa's shredding the Wukong and she's just... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let her do that. We don't need the Wukong. It's just the Wukong. I mean, who who needs the Wukong, right? He just engaged for the entire team. Basically. When that happens, I'd say it's a miscommunication. You need to know when you go in, and everybody needs to know what to do when they go to in. To be fair, though, there is a lot of room for disruption on the side of the Saints. I feel like even though University of Windsor might have been executing those team fights well, even if the communication was there, I feel like the Saints just... There's no real universe where they're just going to let it happen. And nope. I feel like they did a very good job at putting a stop to it, making it difficult for University of Windsor to get those fights off. And I think that's basically what allowed them to come back in that game. Well, in fact, not even come back. They were winning from the start. We yeah, they were winning we from, they were winning from the Scuttle Crab fight. Basically. Period. We Once assumed, they got those four kills, it was over. We assumed that at some point they'd have to make a comeback. That time never came. And at that point, it was already too late for University of Windsor's lineup. But their next lineup... It's going to be different, I'm sure, whereas we head into the next draft at some point. Both of these teams will have this game at the back of their mind, and they're going to be able to make some decisions based off of how they want to take this next game. It is the best of three, so if the Saints win this next one, it's not going to be very pretty for University of Windsor. But I have confidence that they can come back, and I also have confidence that the Saints will be able to take it 2-0. Which one do I want? 
up for you to decide, but what matters is that the action is not over yet, and as we might be going to a break soon, Maybe uh, I think so, yeah. I, we are going to be going to a break, <laughs> but don't go anywhere as the action, like I said, is still just getting started. We'll see you all very soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are now getting ready for game two. The draft will shortly be underway. And if you saw the first game, congratulations. You were privileged and you got to witness the ex the electrifying game one between the St. Clair College Academy League of Legends team and the University of Windsor Lancers. It was quite the sight to behold. Went the way we weren't quite expecting it, but was yes. still an exciting game nonetheless. And as we're getting ready for the second game's draft to get underway, I want to know your thoughts on how this series could be playing out based off of how that first one went. Uh, this one's probably going to be centered around kind of the same thing uh, in terms of the draft. They're probably going to draft right around uh, the same extremities. Like, bands were the... Yeah, as we can see here, actually. Uh, bands are the same on the side of St. Clair. Banning the Easel, banning the Carmel, banning the Viego. And then, yeah, here we have the Swain and the smaller band being the exact same uh, for University of Windsor. The only difference here is that there's a smolder... Uh, bleh, not a smolder. There's a rumble band. Uh, which mm. is kind of interesting. I haven't seen the smolder coming out. Now here, uh, you wins are actually copying the first pick that St. Clair used last game, picking up the Yasuo, and the Riven will actually get picked up there uh, as, like, poss possibly the counter pick? Uh, not 100% sure, but the Senna will be locked in. Senna, a really strong champion right now in the current meta. Uh, I mean, it's in she's being picked pretty much everywhere in pro play. Uh, so being able to see her come out again is interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to see her uh, as a fasting center mm -hmm. or as a support center. So that's <laughs> the only thing that's kind of meh. I remember just before the series today, you were explaining to me what, what a fasting center meant. Yes. And it kind of blew my mind a little bit. I was like, hmm, he's lying to me. He has to be. But maybe nope. you're not. Maybe we are going to see the fasting center <laughs> uh, concept playing out here in this game. We are going to see the center riven. Yasuo going to be the first pick for University of Windsor. Second pick following up is going to be Rakan. Their third, not quite sure on what is going to be Poppy? showing up next. Poppy. Love Poppy. Big Poppy fan. Big Poppy fan. Yeah, I mean, here the poppy pick was just kind of the smart pick. Somebody picked Riven as a blind. It's, I mean, Riven is a great blind pick <laughs> unless poppy is open. Then Riven yeah. is a terrible pick because poppy can just, well... Well, do Poppy things. Look at it this way. You force your opponent to pick Poppy. Maybe you know that they're not confident with Poppy. Maybe you know they struggle with Poppy, but they have to pick Poppy. And maybe yeah, your lineup true. that you want to go for is really strong against Poppy. Those are the draft mind games you got to be playing. And I think that uh, I think that the Saints might be playing it pretty well. Maybe. Who knows? Right? Maybe. Give maybe. The, of the, doubt. Uh, the Karth is going to come out from the Saints. Probably going to be jungle here. Uh, the Ma the Malphite ban, actually, that's kind of smart. I think they're scared of the Yasuo combo wombo mm. thingy. Uh, so, yeah, banning out that Malphite will kind of just stop them from getting any wombo combos with the ultimate. Only thing that's allowed is the Rakan Airborne. Uh, the Tom Kench ban, uh, Tom Kench is just like a generally good support with a Fasting Senna. So really smart ban there. The Yone ban coming out, uh, I guess... Wait, were they, like, assuming that that Poppy was jungle? Maybe, maybe. Poppy is known to be a jungler. Usually she's not played top. Uh, but, I mean, as a counterpick to Riven, it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Unless it was banning it out for the mid lane, uh, which is also a possibility here. And seeing what you Windsor kind of bans out here is going to dictate what they pick. Because they still need to pick their bot Seraphine. Huh? Wait, what? Hmm. A Seraphine ban. Hmm. I mean, maybe they're trying to cover their bases here. What bases? The bases that you want to cover. Seraphine isn't something you want to cover. She's, like, useless right now. In your hands, maybe, but in my hands, it's I a different story. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play either. <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> Maybe, again, these teams, they sit together, they talk together, they strategize, yeah. they plan. They must have had a comp that was completely destroyed by Seraphine, and they don't want to run into it here. That is a possibility, not, yeah. Not PTSD stage, you know? kind of thing. Exactly. So, <laughs> I know you want to play. Uh, some things that they do might not be apparent, but they know what they're going for. Speaking of going, Wait going, a going for it, minute. an Ari pickup. Well, okay, yeah, the Ari is interesting for the mid lane, but what's interesting is they just picked a Varus. There's a Senna. So, is it Senna support? Or is it Varus mid? Because Varus mid is a viable pick. 
Uh, he goes AP and absolutely shreds tanks, mm. which would take care of the Poppy. The J4 will come out as the jungler, because you can't play him top, really. Uh, so we do know it's a Poppy top, which makes sense. Uh, Counterpick to Riven. But here, this last pick will tell us where everybody falls. If we're seeing a support getting picked, a tank support... I love the Wait, silence. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, we already have a top laner, right? Why is a Gwen being hovered? Am I getting I'm getting bamboozled. I wish I could have seen your face there. That was it was like it was like I walked in. Is and, this a Gwengle? And Garfield is real. Like it, it, the same reaction that someone would have if Garfield walked into this room right now is the reaction <laughs> you just had when you saw Gwen get hovered. It was it was remarkable. I think that's a Karthus support and a Gwengle. Tell me what's wrong with it. Or what's good with it. Gwen Jungle has no CC before level 6. Her clear spirit Just isn't farm. that fast. Yeah, but you have... Unless oh, it's a Riven Jungle. It could be a Riven Jungle. I used to do that. Riven People Jungle didn't is like liable. me for it, but I did it. But it's... Bro, St. Clair just absolutely bamboozled my brain. <laughs> what? <laughs> they might. They might Half be their doing... picks are flex picks. Actually, all their picks are flex picks. Val on the stage there. They might be doing something that's not marketing uh, friendly here. Maybe not picking the the most exciting champions. I hope they're getting chewed out right now. They deserve it. They're even confusing you. You know, they they gotta be. What are they? What are you guys doing over there? Come on. But you see, the <laughs> University of Windsor, they're humble. They, they they're don't calm. know what they're, they're doing. They're in at. the blue and they're chilling. Nobody's gonna have to yell at these guys. They're they're the guests here. They're the esteemed guests of honor and they're making a lineup picks that makes sense all right in in today's society the problem is that people are drafting lineups that don't make sense and the saints are contributing to that but i i would be lying I mean, if i said i wasn't excited to see what they're going to do with it it's good like if your mm. draft has the analyst confused it's because you have a good draft because it means your opponents don't know where the hell everything is going mm. it means you don't know well okay Maybe you do. Maybe, Maybe you do know. You get you you literally just get to say, okay, so these are the champions we're playing. Um, so which 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 champion do you guys want to play? Literally say that after the draft, mm. and you literally get to draft your champions as you're finishing or you finish the draft. And this is this is so one of the reasons weird. I love these battles of Windsor so much. And just in general, whenever we put on a show for an audience, because the, the energy in that the area is, is so <laughs> nice. You know, a lot of people are showing up, showing support for their favorite teams, whether it's for University of Windsor or it's for the Saints. You know, a lot of people showing up and showing their love for the Saints. I even saw a Toronto Fan 34 out there, what the Saints <laughs> basically number one fan in the Spiffy oh, jersey. So you got yep. a lot of people out here showing their support for the stream and for the team. So if you ever know of the events that we're doing here in the Nexus, and you're ever debating whether or not you should come i'm telling you right now come over we have a great facility you can, you even get to play exactly it's like over there general area you play long enough you might even be on one of these teams you know yeah. so <laughs> i mean we have scholarships available exactly so you know there's never a reason not to come out and enjoy the atmosphere we're not even charging people yet so come <laughs> while it's still free <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, enjoy the atmosphere you can even see the players all having a great time on both teams so hopefully you guys come by sometime and enjoy it if you want to know whenever events like this are going on again follow our social medias those are the best places to go to stay informed whenever we're doing a special event like this so be sure to stay in the loop and speaking of in the loop we kind of got thrown for a loop uh, after that draft because yeah. uh we're still trying to pick up the pieces of our brain i, th I think i got the hang of it here. though okay, like, like look at it yeah. looking at it okay so pop so they pick a ribbon on two uh -huh. And they pick the Karthus, or was it the Karthus? Or mm -hmm. no, it was the Senon on, uh, on three, right? So right. on four five, they um, they decide, okay, you know what? We're gonna pick um, Rakan Poppy because the Riven can't play top, right? The trick is Saints can play Riven both top and mid. So here the Riven is mid. The Karthus is gonna be jungle. I can't and wait to see you be wrong. It's gonna be Gwen super funny for top. Because Gwen into Poppy isn't that bad. Like, granted, you have some times where you can't dash, mm. but it, there isn't that much time. And then it's a Vera Senna bot lane. Uh, so you basically have 280 carries. So this is <laughs> Well, I was about time. to say, we, we got to see it in live time that we have to have a pause go up. We, we saw the play. ADC monitor off. <laughs> we saw the games. Wait, hold on. Were they playing without their monitor no, this you, whole time? No, did you see? Like, the, the player 
POV. We were watching the player view, yeah. and the game completely froze. So we got to witness a technical issue live. Yeah. Rare we get to enjoy those. So, um, you know, now we know what's going on at the very least. We saw it coming. We can't say we're surprised. But it pause is going to have to come out. And we're right back into the action. Okay, got that monitor back on. Maybe kick the, the cable. It's not impossible. It's just making sure the settings are all good now. Yeah. After that kind of problem. But in the sensical, in the more sensical lineup, all right, on the side of Mirror City Windsor, we see the Jarvan, J4, with the jungle. It's about expected. You know, the Yasuo going to be mid. Or uh, actually, Yasuo top? Or, wait. No. Yasuo ADC. Poppy top. Yasuo, Yasuo ADC. ADC. All right. Yeah. Which is... A I'm going to say it. It's a terrible choice. The pick does not work as an ADC. Like, you can play it. it but it just it doesn't function properly. You can't farm, and you're going to get zoned off. And mm. anybody who's worth their bread as an ADC in a, like this elo is just yeah they're they're gonna they're gonna beat you it's it no questions asked because they know how to punish a melee into a uh, ranged mm. uh matchup here and i mean rakan and yasuo are both melees right if there was like a, i don't know a mage support okay different story you can kind of play around the yasuo but here they're just gonna get pushed in and like yeah okay the yasuo can engage uh or rakan can engage onto the senna and they can try and get the senna because senna pops like popcorn i mean she's squishy as hell but even then i mean look at what's going on yasuo is completely put back senna gets to basically farm souls for free on them we're gonna see an absolutely terrifying senna in the um in the late game and the varus can go both ap or ad i think he went uh lethal tempo so it would be a p shooter um varus here so just full attack speed and on hit but even then, it's going to be terrifying. So, yeah, here, of course, their their jungler just decides or has to decide to play around the bot lane here. As we can see, the first uh, gank might just be coming out. The tornado doesn't land, so they don't have the engage from that. J4 just biding his time uh, right around that corner. They push in the wave. Rakan flashes in, doesn't land the W. Root connects onto Yasuo. Lethal Tempo fully stacked for the Varus. They're trying to get that Yasuo to die. He's going to have to flash out. Senna matches his flash, tries to sh throw out the root, uh -oh. but it doesn't work out. J4 gets the kill onto the Varus, and that is not a good situation if you are the Saints as the Senna falls two to the Yasuo. And, well, now I'm proven wrong. Uh, the Yasuo is actually doing okay, which he should not by any means be. Uh, that... Gank definitely did surprise the Saints and resulted in that gank working out very or very well. Uh, if they had vision, it would have been a lot more helpful, but they just, they didn't have that vision because they were focused on pushing in the Yasuo, which resulted in, uh, well, two kills. One going to, wait, was that one going to J4 and one going to, uh, yeah, Yasuo. But here on the other side, uh -oh. we're seeing the opposite not happening as J4 picks. Oh, wait, hold on. No, that's not the opposite happening. J4, wait, he's already top? <laughs> oh, J4 didn't even clear his camps. He just went straight for Scuttle. <laughs> he doesn't care about his camp. Okay. What a mess. What I a mean, mess. like, ideally speaking, you'd take a few camps because you wouldn't expect the Karthus to be there. But damn, this time the Karthus went straight to that. And because J4 had the back, plus he had the support from the Poppy, uh, because Gwen didn't really have that priority. Uh, yeah, I mean, you end up with a situation where that happens. It's not ideal, but I mean, it, hey, it happens. Um, as we can see here in the bot lane, uh, lots of trading going on. But yeah, I mean, Senna's just farming stacks essentially, and it'd be nice. It'd be nice to know how many stacks Senna has right now, because she should have like this is free range, fully organic Yasuo and Rakan souls right, right now. now. We're seeing a bit in the past. This might be the uh, the feed with the delay on it. So we're Ooh, gonna get okay. to, we're gonna get a little bit of hindsight here. We're gonna get to see exactly what led up to all of those chaotic events that we witnessed just popping oh no we're right back into the action now <laughs> and that's i wouldn't have it any other way we are going to be able to enjoy the action as it's happening now we're seeing the poppy as we left i believe it might have been uh three to uh, three to one on the stage now we're looking at four 
to two. So there have been some trades going out here. And uh, wow, I, one other thing I want to mention, it's not every day you see a Riven mid. And I nope. feel like that, uh, especially when it's Codito on that Riven, a bit of a, a bit of a scary threat to see. So in interested to see how that mid lane is going to go and how it's going to affect the rest of these lineups here. But Void Gub is going to get picked up by University of Windsor as well. And I feel like things are going very comfortably their way. Yeah, I mean, here U Windsor has priority. Uh, wow, even the dash, the airborne going to come in onto the Gwen. That gank from the Rakan is going to do a lot of damage. Gwen gets the snips, but doesn't heal enough. And uh, Poppy's going to get that kill. Yeah, I mean, ooh, airborne, but no engage. Just, that's the problem with Yasuo ADC. If he gets ahead, I mean, it's like, well... Yasuo Yone ahead is terrifying, independently of what lane they're in, right? So if Yasuo does get ahead, then you have this situation where the ADC doesn't even get to play the game. Um, but here, oh, hold on. Senna coming from the back, gonna land two, gonna land three auto attacks, but the wind root wall. will get blocked by the wind wall. You also left half HP here. Senna with the extra movement speed, going to get real up close and personal, gonna land that second root, gonna get the kill. Actually, no, that's the Varus getting the kill onto the, uh, the Yasuo. So, not a good situation for them. Uh, we're going to have to be looking at, uh, let's see here, uh, the mid lane, actually. The mid lane is having a pretty interesting situation. Uh, as we can see here, the Aerie trading back and forth with the Riven. The Riven has, um, I mean, she's always brought low right now. But, oh, hold on here. I think we have Observer. We do have Observer. Um, Observer POV here is looking really, really good. Um, it's three minutes behind, though, my friend. Oh, it is three minutes <laughs> behind. That is unfortunate. No worries, but we are back in the action now, and the Poppy is dashing in, seeing if they can break Gwen's scissors. It's still relatively even across the board. Saints are down three kills, but they were down a little bit more than that, from what I recall. So uh, I think that they still have a lot of room to grow in this composition, despite it being goofy as all heck. But... I think there's uh, there's some wiggle room for it. And I feel like they're capable of quite a lot. And they're holding their own so far. Even in this top lane, Gwen is still able to, you know, contest the poppy. There are rotations coming out that have been favorable for University of Windsor. But the Saints are not losing more than they... They're, they're, they're losing about as much as they should. For what the University of Windsor is committing, they're getting out of it what they're putting in. Yeah, um, for sure. They have to commit something to get these kills. It's not like the Saints are just giving it to them. Unfortunately, this is Ooh, one of the circumstances no. where they are just giving the kill. Um, and the University of Windsor is going to graciously take it. Not much committed outside of the Poppy Ultimate, which isn't going to have much of a use um, until mid to late game against well, the other side of the team. She's playing top too, so you don't... Exactly. Like, you don't worry about that exactly. at all. It's not your job to to do a huge ultimate or anything. So, so there's yeah, just nothing. Just use it as an yeah, extra ability. Use it as just a way to get kills against the enemy top lane. You're not even really committing anything in that regard. But other than that one kill, I feel like University wins just going to... It has to have committed uh, more than necessary to get them. But still, the Saints are fighting in this bottom side against that Yasuo. It's a little bit difficult playing against the Yasuo when you have two ranged champions constantly getting their projectiles blocked out the wind wall. Even CSing is just quite difficult in that regard. But well, the Saints are still making it work. There's a neat interaction with Senna. Senna's uh, weapon is actually a laser. So it doesn't count towards the wind wall. It's like a soul Q. Uh, but here, I mean, Karthus ultimate comes out. J4 gonna get the kill onto the Senna. The ultimate, the chains of corruption, land onto the Yasuo. Yasuo brought really low, but it doesn't matter as Aerie comes in and wraps up the kill onto the Varus. Yikes! Uh, yeah. Sailor College not looking ideal right now. All right, so game three is looking pretty interesting so far. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, game three is coming up. Uh, because, I mean, the Saints are just... They had an interesting draft, but I don't think mm -hmm. the execution's coming around right now. Um, to be fair, not a lot of the lanes are winning lanes. Uh, Riven into Aerie is not ideal. Gwen into Poppy is a skill matchup, if not sided towards Poppy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the only one that I would say was on the side of St. Clair is the one that's Ooh. hard winning right now. Uh, but, oh, never mind. Hold on. The Riven just popped the ultimate. And yeah, when that happens, you can be terrified. Uh, those fast Riven combos just deal so much damage uh, from anywhere from the early to the late game. So you really have to be careful with those. Riven going to start off those Void Grubbies uh, with Karthus. 
Carthus is going to tank basically everything as Riven tries to get some damage in on their back line here. But that Gwen, even with the ultimate coming out, just doesn't deal enough damage. She doesn't have her items and without those items, you just, you can't do much. Yeah, she has to dash over the wall just to get away. And most of the Void Grubs will be heading towards J4 here. As, yeah, oh, oh hold okay. on here. Blighted Arrow going to land onto Yasmo. Going to get that kill. Uh, I Wow, I did not expect that. Whew. All right. Um, on the flip side here, though, it's still 11 to 5. Gold advantage is towards uh, University of Windsor. I think we're caught here kind of zoning off the Gwen uh, from that tower. If she does show up on vision, uh, he's probably going to engage and they're going to try and proxy her from her wave, uh, which is honestly a horrible thing to do to a top laner. They're already all alone. Why do you why do you have to do them like this? Oh, yeah, we're seeing it right now. Gwen can't dash away. And yeah, Poppy going to absolutely deal way too much damage there. And Gwen is just stuck in a terrible situation. She's under her tower, way too low to do anything. The buckler is going to land with a huge grass proc. And Gwen, Gwen even has to ghost just in case. Uh, but she just, she doesn't have damage right now. I'd, I'd like to see her items because I don't think they're... they're Like, maybe a Hextech alternator or an Abyssal Void Visage. Or, uh, no, wait. Is it an abyssal village? I don't remember. Anyways, it's not really good. Like she, she probably has about thirteen hundred gold. Uh, yeah, there you go. You've got the uh, the mask, and mm. she's got a book. That's it. Sounds like me on a on a Friday. I have my mask and my book. It's a spa day. Oh, bad joke, but I went for it. In any case, I don't do that. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, as we're getting right back into the thick of it here, things have settled a little bit, but you wouldn't be able to tell based off of the scoreline. University of Windsor 11 to the Saints 5. Saints are able to get two dragons throughout all this chaos, but I believe University of Windsor had control of the void side of things, you know, taking the yeah. grubs and the like. They're probably going to be trying to rush down the Rift Herald as soon as they get the chance to as well. Well, so I feel like the Saints, what's their path to recovery if there is one? Uh, the path to recovery here is Soul. They have the advantage when it comes to Soul. They have two dragons to the uh, zero that U Windsor has. So they need to play around that Soul and try and just get it as soon as possible because then they will be at the advantage in those team fights. Uh, as, oh, hold on here. <sighs> I don't know. But it's mm. it, mm. I it's, mean, a, it's hard to tell because yeah. if you play for Dragon, right? What happens is you need to take a team fight, but you Windsor is ahead right. if they take a team fight because they have the gold advantage. So like, because Dragons, like, yeah, okay, they're strong. But they're not that strong. They're not gonna make up for a gold advantage. That's so this significant, right? Uh, so. It's all going to come down to who plays the team fight, right? And in terms of team fight, uh, speaking of team fights, actually, here, <laughs> Quickness being popped, sent out, forced to flash, but still going to get airborne. You also ultimately got to land onto her, but hold on here. There is a Karthus going to drop the wall, going to slow down both the Yasuo and the Rakan, and whoo, okay, Karthus going to pick up one, and I believe Varus took the Yasuo there. Uh, so, a double kill for the Saints. Double kill, and in a circumstance like this, they're going to take anything they can get because they've been really playing off of the back foot for this whole game. And for I feel, for what I feel like is the first time in forever, the Saints are pushing past that river. And in fact, they're even going to get that turret. So it feels like a, a big weight has been removed off of their shoulders. So now they have a little bit more room to play. What do you think their next focus might be? What's their what's their next target? What do they need to focus on next if they want to fight back and get their way back into this game? Uh, right now, the angle would be all in on the Varus. Varus is their win condition here. Mm. Uh, as Yeah, I mean, you can see the Rivet can't do anything. She got airborne. She's dashing out, but yeah, that shield isn't big enough anymore and gets killed by the J4. The win condition is the Varus. They need to play completely around the the Varus. The problem would be that the Saints all have, I'll say damage champions. There's a lack of utility. You've got the Varus ultimate. You've got Senna, 
power control, I guess, um, and AOE movement speed, but it's not much. Other than that, Riven does have good CC, but she's mostly damage centered, right? She's more of that like 1v9 type champion. Um, you look at the jungle, right? Um, there's not much there in terms of utility and neither does Gwen. I mean, Gwen is by default just a d AP damage. It's AP Fiora, if you will. Uh, well, more like AP Irel. No, not Irelia. Think of it like AP Camille. That's what Gwen is. She's AP Camille. Um, but yeah, just a lack of utility. Oh, speaking of a lack of utility, you're not going to be very useful if you're dead. The Saints Riven going to go Ooh. down once more. At least to Karthus, it's going to find the kill onto Jarvan. Not sure if they had a face-to-face -face interaction or if we, uh, you know, just pressed that. Yeah, it was button. the funny button. Gotcha. <laughs> well, in any case, at least they're going to get something out of it. And another player, thankfully, with a normal POV, we're going to be able to see the Rakan's perspective. I think they might be getting ready to set up around the uh, next dragon, which is going to be the Chemtech. Do you think this is going to be a big thing they're going to want to focus on? Uh, any dragon. Right now, the Saints need dragons, period. If they mm. can get onto Soul Point, they have a win condition. Um, well, that's probably why uh, you win's just going to be trying to take it from them then. <laughs> yeah, they're just they're holding down that vision as exactly. much as they can. They're trying to secure the dragon and get ahead from that so that they can make up for the dragons that they missed. Um, and then... <sighs> Karthus is going to be... Uh, the problem is, Saints have a very late game composition. So I'm not surprised that the early game champions are doing well. Um, the problem is, can Saints get to that late game? Because getting to the late game is half the battle when it comes to late game team composition, right? The, the Saints scale super, super well versus uh, Windsor, who has... I mean, Yasuo scales decently... But Riven scales like nobody's business, and so does Senna, and Varus is really good too. As here we can see, Riven is kind of cooking uh, due to the Ignite. Her Hex Drinker not going to help her much against a full AD uh, J4, so going to go down to him. Although I don't think, I, it might be a Bruiser J4 actually. Uh, but yeah, Senna finished her support item. Uh, which is the battle song, I believe. Uh, it's basically like um, Spellblade that mm. increases all damage to whatever target you hit with the Spellblade effect by, I think it's like 10% for a few seconds. Yeah, it's kind of broken. It's basically a mini PTA. Um, oh, hold on. Two engagements kind of kind of popping up. Some on the top. The Ari's already disengaged. But on the bottom side, the Karthus now is in a little bit of heat. Potentially, seeing so if can get the J4 yet again, but no dice. Gonna be forced to retreat, maybe even paying for it with his life. Gonna get slashed up by the Yasuo, but Riven is here now. Kodito, the Bandito, takes down the Yasuo, and it almost gets to Poppy, but the dash is gonna be blocked, but it's not over yet. The Rakan gonna get the Airborne. That's gonna make way for Poppy to get out, but Rakan is gonna pay for it with his life. There it goes. Riven is still giving chase actively. The dashes are still available, but gonna give it up there and gonna let that one go forth. Okay, well, here the Saints are coming back. Uh, lot, I mean, Varus got one kill. Uh, Riven got one kill. So they're scaling. They're 100% they're scaling. There's already a Bork on the Varus, right? So this is going to be an on-hit Varus. Um, the Umbral Glaive on the Senna. We've got the Leandris on the Karthus. And I think, yeah, Gwen has her Rift Maker and Lucy Boots. So we're kind of starting to see that the Saints are coming online. Now they're starting to get those items that they desperately need for their more late game centered composition. Um, and yeah, Yasuo is going to be the only thing that I would really be scared about in the late game, uh, along with maybe the Aerie. Poppy's going to be tank. So, I mean, you're not usually scared of tanks in the late game. They're tanks. They're going to soak up damage for like a second and then they don't exist. Uh, but yeah, Yasuo is going to deal a lot of damage and so will Airy as oh, hold on here. Cataclysm coming down, going to get answered by the, uh, the arrows, but not much. Two ultimates coming out and nobody dies there. That was okay. Unexpected. 
I would have expected at least. You know what? I'm expecting. I'm expecting this ribbon Ooh. to be a threat and a half. The Varus is here, but they're going to be forced on the back foot to retreat. And I think the Saints are finally feeling a little bit of confidence. The wind in their sails is picking up. The Varus is becoming a bit more relevant, and this ribbon is honestly coming into her own as well. Um, Codito has done a lot of good work being Ooh, a persistent threat is up. without risking too much of his life. I'm not sure what his uh, kill death score is going to be looking like right now. Thank you for the B flash. It's got five deaths on the Riven. I would bet that most of them are from the early game because I feel yep. like right now the way that this that Codito is playing on the Riven is really conservative but aggressive when necessary. Putting pressure where it matters and getting the most out of it for the Saints side and unlocking those moments for the Saints to kind of make those comebacks and, uh, you know, get back in this game. He's locking in and just carrying the team on his shoulders, allowing the space for them to get things going. Yeah, he's he's getting those placements down and he is where he needs to be uh, in those fights here. As we can see, Baron is the only objective up. Uh, so they're gonna ha kinda have to play around vision for both Baron and Drag whenever it comes up. It's gonna be a little bit hard as here we can see a skirmish in the mm. top jungle. Uh -oh. uh, not looking ideal. Ooh. Riven though, taking control of this, fighting the Riven on the left side, but on the right side, a lot of chaos is going on. Senna and Varus all falling. Yasuo and Rakan are next. Poppy is solo. The Karthus Ultimus most likely going to take her life. No, just barely surviving. The driver goes down again. The shield oh. even doing more to keep this Poppy healthy and happy. A lot of deaths going down, more so on the siding. Mirror versus Windsor, and both of these teams are going to be feeling the effects of that engagement. Yeah, not ideal for you, Windsor, here. Uh, it seems to me like the Saints are kind of pulling a T1. Uh, if you haven't been following T1 lately, they've basically just been losing the early game, taking one team fight, and then winning the game. Uh, so we're kind of seeing that same thing here where Saints are just... They're getting what they need in those team fights, and now they're winning like really hard. Oh my god, that Yasuo. Yeah, that Yasuo is uh, not in a good situation right now. He yeah. is brought way too low. Um, I mean, with that, means a lot of things, right? Um, oh, hold on here. The Chains of Corruption is going to lock down the Poppy, but not the Blighted Arrow, so not going to deal much damage. They, The Saints want to contest this dragon, but they just, they just can't, right? Was that a replay? No, so uh, that Yasuo walking around, that was three minutes ago. But what we just saw now, that's the real deal. You can see 22 minutes in. And we've been ah, standing okay. here talking for about 22 minutes. So uh, I feel like now the next logical step, I just have a hunch. I just have a feeling that University of Witch is going to want to go for Baron. I'm not sure why I get that feeling. Maybe it's the fact that they are on um, Baron. You know what? Maybe that could be a good indication of it. But whether or not the Saints are going to be contending, that is going to be the real mystery. Uh, and I think, as we can see, they are making it up. Uh, I b do believe that they, they have the did video. have on them there so we already have two of their oh, best no. and brightest fighting for the Varus is gonna go down early so it's gonna be a little bit harder to make this fight work for them and it's but at the very least they are gonna delay it in fact uh, Baron is gonna be able to heal most of the damage that University of Windsor did to it yeah well they did cancel the Baron which was the goal of that fight uh, they did lose the Varus in the process but that's that is a risk they were willing to take because at least they stopped the Baron, right? A dead Varus is worth a lot less than a full Baron. Uh, so they'll they'll take that loss. But, yeah, I mean, if you're the Saints, the situation could be worse. But it could be a lot better. Because, so what happens here is, right, just base draft. You have the Karthus, which just got his um, second item. Which basically allows him to spread an AoE magic, um, what's it called? Uh, magic resist decrease. So, what ends up happening is you want the Gwen to go in right after that ultimate. Because the Gwen has the magic damage, right? Mm -hmm. So she's going to deal a ton of damage through um, her abilities when all their resistances are down. Because of the Karthus ultimate, which hits all at the same time, which makes a ton of uh, multiple like little areas where that magic resist goes down. Uh, with the, it's not malignance. It's wait, it is malignance. Um, 
Yeah, that is the name of that uh -oh. item. But oh, Yasuo getting caught Ooh, out here. Okay. Riven jumping over that wall. That, wow. <laughs> that could have been. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> I'm sorry. That was uh, that, that was, was really close. scary. <laughs> that flash could not have been a microsecond uh, slower than it was because that Yasuo would most likely be dead. But right now, this Vera certainly is gonna go down in the middle lane. You don't want that happening any more than it already has. Rakan trying to continue the aggression, knocking up two, but disengaging ultimately. They really are going to have to figure out a way to make these engagements well, go their way, but Saints are struggling so far. Yeah, that kill there on the Varus means it's barren. Saints are just, uh, they're waiting for the Senna. That's all they need. They need the Senna to come online. She needs to get those souls to get that extra range so that she can't be reached by the Rakan. Uh, once she can't be reached by the Rakan, I mean, there's nothing they can really do. Senna actually going to get charmed through that Baron wall. Uh, but I don't think it's going to stop the Baron. Yasuo gets killed, actually, by uh, the Karthus. You're still going to be able to take the Baron, but I feel like the Saints really do have a good chance of making something incredible happen here. The Gwen is going to be forcing down that Poppy, not going to get too much out of that University of Windsor, and the Saints are continuing the chase over onto the Jarvan. You're going to be able to escape, and they're trying to find the Rakan as well, doing a lot of damage to him. They got the, the Baron, they lost two, uh, and the Saints were able to kind of push them back after it. Yeah, I mean, the, the Saints got the push back from that Baron, which is insane. I mean, Gwen's Needlework did a lot of damage there. Uh, so just having that ability, and I think, are they trying to take the Tier 2? Yeah, they're t trying to take the Tier 2. J4 going to get the Airborne on both the Varus and the Senna. Going to get Cataclysm to lock down that Varus. Uh, Senna going to be a little bit more slippery than her ADC and going to get away, though. Uh, so just one, oh, maybe that two kills. The Carthus also fell. I, I didn't see, I, maybe the Aerie picked him up. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a dragon for sure. Uh, so again, that kind of the win condition that St. Clair was playing around or wants to play around right now, mm -hmm. uh, not going in their favor. But on the other hand, um, they do have a good scaling, right? So if that Senna can really come online, and do a little bit more in those later games. As long as um, you Windsor doesn't have soul, they're gonna be fine, right? Because it's two dragons to two dragons, which means it's gonna be a really, really late soul. Um, but ideally speaking, you want that Senna to go on until 40 minutes and she'll have fun. Because I've, I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen a Senna at 40 minutes, but like she, she gets, I, have. I think it's like, I saw one at 40 minutes with like 950 range. Uh, that stuff is insane. And you can just sit back uh, from a team fight and deal enough damage that you just win it automatically with your souls. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Karthus too, just late game Karthus is terrifying. And I think Varus is kind of going to turn into a support later on in the game that's going to peel for that Senna once she gets that range up and running, which is kind of like the advantage of having a Senna. Uh, you basically turn your ADC into the support, even though you still have the support item, uh, the later on the game goes. And that's why we see them hanging around each other just so often. Um, as Poppy here, trying to look for an engage, because they want to get that tier 3 uh, top tower just out of the game so that they can get to that inhibitor, but it's kind of hard. There's a lot of wave clear uh, with that Karthus AoE. Uh, along with the Senna, of course, and the Varus, which have a lot of attack speed, uh, can do a lot of work done. But uh, they will, I think, no, they're even going to clear out the mid tier two, or tier three, I mean. So, yeah. Terminus, I think, is coming out for uh, Varus here, actually, on this back. Yeah, Terminus will be purchased, so that is a three item Varus. Going to get a little bit more spooky. I want to see what the Senna looks like, because the Senna probably has two items by now. Uh, yeah, Senna has that um, spell shield uh, with Knight's Edge along with her Umbral Glaive. So going full lethality, but still opting to just kind of 
have whatever she can eating up the souls uh, and have enough utility to make sure that she clears up vision but also doesn't get engaged on. Because, I mean, with that black shield, she can't, like, nobody can go in, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like right now, uh, the Saints are in a bit of a predicament where they feel confident enough to take a fight, but they don't exactly want to go for it. There's just too much risk associated with leaving their base and looking for something more than what they're getting right now. But if they don't do something like that soon, they will start to fall off fast, as University of Windsor will be able to get so much more farm than them, and it's, it's going to be hard. Hard to recover from there uh, you know even the poppy out leveling the riven right now pretty handedly and uh you know you don't want to see something like that especially in a game where you're trying to recover yeah well the recovery is coming they they're getting kills they're getting assists they're trying what they need is objectives right now if they get those objectives then they're chilling but getting those objectives is kind of hard right now because again they're a late game team composition and they don't have anything to get them there yet. So they're just working as much as they can to stay alive. Right now the game is keep that Nexus up and wait. Because as long as that Nexus is up, Senna is going to be a threat later. Um, so as long... And even the Karthus too, like I, I'm focusing on the Senna a lot. But even the Karthus has like a really good late game, right? When those ultimates are coming out every 50, 40 seconds... You, you can't do anything. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we can see it. There's both the Leandries and uh, the, I think, yeah. So Leandries, Malignants, and the Shadow Flame going to be picked <laughs> up. So like he's got the damage now to really be terrifying to your entire team. So those team fights are going to be really hard to take um, with that Karthus ultimate just raring to go. And with the Riven, right? The Riven can always engage. She has good scaling with her AD ratios. Uh, so when she engages, like, you're going to feel it. I do just want to quickly say shout outs to this Varus, you know, being the most farmed champion in this game despite all the uh, trouble he's been going through. So well done to the Sage Varus player. But um, I think it was Creator Soa. Yeah, I can see it whenever that fl uh, leaderboard flashes up every once in a while. But yeah, Creator Soa, still the most farmed champion in this game. Uh, whether or not it's going to pay off in the long run, we're going to have to wait and see because so far in all of these engagements, he seems to be going down first. I haven't really gotten a chance to see this Varus shine uh, and do all the damage that he's kind of promised to with all of this gold he's been holding on to so far. But with this engagement most likely coming up next through the mid lane as the Saints have left their base, they're trying to go on the Yasuo and he's engaging back. That likely means that the University of Windsor side is not too far away, but Varus is going to be able to pop him down. He's on the outskirts of this fight. He's going to be able to get, get as much damage off as he can, but a TP coming out, forcing them back, and the Karthus is going to go down. Jarvin, or Jarvin is in the fight now, Poppy. <laughs> Knocking Boy, up the Varus and charmed in. Aww. He is going to go down. Like I said, he is so vital to the Saints' opposition, but he's going to go down eventually. Senna is able to take down Ari. And Raven on the J4 is going to go down Gwen. next. The Gwen snipping, She's snipping, snipping. So Poppy running for her life now. Already used the ultimate. You can't get this Gwen out of your face, which means you're going to die for it. Maybe trying to get the Senna as Damn. a uh, secondary prize here, but ultimately going to go down what is Gwen. That or honestly, I mean, this fight's still going. This healing, the shielding is looking pretty scary so far. The Senna really might go down. In fact, they're just going to disengage. Let the Poppy live to see another day. So they are not losing as much as they could have. Unending despair, of course. But, uh, you know, the Saints, uh, they did get quite a bit out of that engagement. You know, they, they really could have uh, lost more. They did lose the Varus, but they were able to get plenty of kills uh, left over after that one. I believe now the Saints... Saints just kind of have to keep taking these engagements smart and consistently. They don't want to make any big plays that will overextend them. You know, the side of University Winds are able to take the Soul Dragon, and it's not going to be too easy now. They are still going to use the Yasuo, or lose the Yasuo on the side of University of Windsor. So the Saints are always going tit for tat. You know, they don't let them get anything for free, which is what you need if you're going to stay in this game. Yeah, the Yasuo is uh, kind of turning into like an irrelevant. Like all he is is an airborne continuation right now. He doesn't have the durability to do much after that. Uh, so he's kind of just left with a lack of range on the side of uh, U Windsor here. Because 
there's no backline if you well okay the backline is airy but airy's an assassin so she's not the best of back lines is here I and mean, even when they're like they locked down the riven just then and they couldn't even burst her enough with four people right so you can kind of see that lack of damage slash uh range coming into factor right and once that happens you get these situations where i mean yeah airy here getting caught out she's one of the main dps's big engage coming through probably gonna get the kill onto the Carthus, but Carthus, remember, can still deal damage when he's yeah. dead. Riven gonna get the kill onto the Rockon. Poppy gets the Senna locked down, but Varus gets revenge for his support. And, I mean, that is a bad situation if you are you, Windsor, that Yasuo yeah, needs to fall back. Is... The Aerie needs to fall back. The J4 needs to fall back. And the re-engage just isn't possible. They're too low. The Saints are doing so well so far. They're maintaining their composure and they are taking all the engagements that they need in order to stay healthy, but they're not taking unnecessary risks. And I think that's the factor, like I said so many times before, that's keeping them in this game. They have the discipline and they have the eye for what matters. And they're not going to lose their heads over something that ultimately isn't going to keep them out of the game. And they're always finding something in these engagements that's making sure that University of Windsor is not getting these uh, these kills or these fights for free. So as a result, now we're looking at the scoreline 29 to 22, whereas before the start of the game, it was a lot more you wins are skewed. I feel like now the Saints really are in a good chance to potentially steal this game. But this next Baron could sway things quite a lot. The last time around, you Windsor lost to, they lost their Windsor, or they lost their Yasuho before, uh, you know, the baron fight even really started and then they lost their ari i believe afterward so it's not gonna be something they want to repeat and the saints aren't gonna want to let them get this away for free because that would spell some disaster for them in fact they are gonna lose their senna which is looking really good for oh, you no. windsor and this next baron fight might not even happen if they recognize that it's gonna be quite difficult to do so without the senna's guidance they are gonna either try to push for mid alone or at least try to get some trying vision. to steal yeah see if they can find anything but no they are gonna have no choice but to back oh, off let them take it take and objectives on the other side of the map and uh you know hope for the best from here yeah well when it comes to your enemy team having the baron the like standard procedure is to push out waves if you're not going to contest it because that way they need to push out your waves mm -hmm. and that kind of just buffers the baron buff right um so they need to do more with that buff in uh still set amount of time uh so they do get two objective bounties which is actually a huge amount of gold there uh going towards the saints they're gonna have to find is the wait was he hovering jack show is he gonna go for a jack show last night on varus i mean he did get a wit's end so he's not against resistances but i mean jack show's not gonna keep you alive for that long right I mean, I feel like the thing that would keep him alive the most is not being at the front of these engagements every time they happen. But unfortunately, he really doesn't have a choice. Varus is in that weird spot where he has to be kind of on the front lines, but you don't want all the downsides that come from being on the front lines. Yeah, well, he so. gets engaged on by J4 too, so he exactly. can't really do much from that, right? It's and J4. without Flash, I mean, like, Flash is your only real escape when you're playing Varus, so no. he can't really disengage. He has to rely on his team to either be there to kill any threat that's on top of him or rely on his own potency to do that for him. But as you wins there, they, the way they are able to engage these fights is so explosive, it, it's a lot <laughs> easier said than done. Yep. So here we can see the Gwen doing a lot in the side lanes, though. And, like... <sighs> The Gwen had a rough time in the lightning phase, and now she's coming online with more items. Uh, but we can see here the Yasuo with a Jack Show going, i.e. Kraken Slayer Jack Show. Uh, but yeah, the Yasuo is completely behind right now. Uh, I don't, I didn't see his kills, but he did good for the early game. But now he's completely useless, and as I was talking about uh, last time, right? There's just a lack of range when it comes to you, Windsor. So they're just, they lose the poke war. They need to all in all the time. Mm. Um, so if they can just kind of deny that all in, 
Well, Ooh. it's maybe gonna go their way. Varus surviving on such a little HP, the knockup, but he is ultimately gonna go down. Yasuo getting the final dash he needed. Karthus is gonna be next to fall. Senna as well. Poppy and the rest of you Windsor wiping them out. The Karthus ultimate is gonna take down two. The Saints, however, they don't have much of a defense left as they lose their oh, last no. man standing. And that's gonna allow you Windsor to take the Nexus as they take game two. And you Windsor, showing that they still have what it takes to compete in this series, tying it up 1-1. They're not going to let the Saints take this one for free. They're going to be keeping themselves alive in this series. Yeah, uh, the draft was great. The draft was great. Uh, I loved seeing the draft for the Saints. It looked terrific. The problem was... I'm uh, sorry. The draft looked nice initially, but when you look more into it now, like with post-game clarity you kind of realize that the draft was not ideal for them. Mm -hmm. The Riven into an airy isn't a winning lane. Poppy against Gwen, yeah, it's a skill <laughs> matchup, but it usually tends towards Poppy. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at, like, um, the Yasuo was going to get the lead early, uh, even with that Senna there with her laser um, going through that wind wall. Like, Senna doesn't exist in the early game she doesn't really have a lot of agency so they were able to get those early plays and they played to their win condition really well of just getting the Senna too far behind and getting the Varus too far behind so that once they do come online they're down to like inhibitor turrets right and once mm -hmm. that happens you have so much like leeway to play around that you can take those dragons you can take those barons and the objectives are just permanently yours uh so playing is a lot harder for your opponents uh, if the game went on for longer, like if Sinclair was able to yeah. stall, then it was over. But they should, yeah, it was a very small margin. They That's... were able to end just fast enough so that Sinclair wasn't too much of a threat, but they were really close to... That's the point I was going to go to as well. Like, I feel like the Saints did such a good job defending. Um, I feel like any other team would have lost a lot faster a than they did. Yeah. Um, but the Saints were able to hold it together and make a lot of significant comebacks and take ground from University Windsor that they were trying to take. So that was a very exciting game, too, for a lot of different mm -hmm. reasons. The draft being uh, you know, something you don't want to neglect in one of those no. factors making well, it draft so interesting, wins the game. for sure. Yeah, and uh, maybe not the Saints draft uh, winning them that game, but... Nope. It <laughs> it won our hearts because it captivated the audience, it captivated our minds, captivated our spirits. Bamboozle but hopefully <laughs> their next draft can captivate the series as we're getting ready for game three. We'll hopefully see you guys soon. If you're not in the arena already, which you absolutely should be, by the way, uh, you know, every time we do these lovely events where we put on a show in the Nexus, feel free to come by and enjoy the show live. If you want to know when we're doing it, you can always follow the social media on the same side as where we post everything all the time. But as we're going to get ready to go to a quick break as game three gets underway i'll just remind you to stay tuned because you don't want to miss that action so we'll see you guys very soon
Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to lock in. As we're getting into game three, both of these teams are playing with their lives on the line, and more importantly, their pride. As we are in the Battle of Windsor, and whoever wins this can definitively claim they are the best League of Legends team in Windsor. Uh, you know, not counting all the other ones, but they're the best League of Legends team competing in the Nexus today in Windsor. And ultimately, There are only two teams. <laughs> hey. Just just in case. <laughs> but you can be the best of two of them. Yes, you can be the exactly. best of two. And as long as you're better than somebody, that's all that matters. But speaking of better than, <laughs> let's get a look at these drafts and decide whether or not these drafts are better than what we've been looking uh, at. Well, okay. The band, let's, let's start off on the good side. The bands look actually really clean here. Uh, St. Clair going for the same bands. Uh, University of Windsor going for almost the same bands. Deciding to ban the Aatrox this time. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to the picks that were locked in, now I'm minorly terrified as I'm seeing Smolder Maokai Graves. So, uh, usually the Smolder is banned. This time it was not, mm. which means uh, there's a serious level of danger associated with that. And University of Windsor is going to have to be very careful when dealing with him. Uh, although they do lock in the Kaisa Thresh, try and, I guess, play around his vulnerable early game. Although I say vulnerable, uh, his early game isn't that vulnerable. The Kane is going to be what you need to look out for. Because this Kane needs to one-shot the Smolder like it's nobody's business. This guy needs to ignore everybody else and just take out the Smolder. That That is literally the team fight. If the Smolder's dead, we're good. It sounds like what you're saying is the team that has Smolder is going to win the game. I may or may not be inferring that Riot's latest champion is overloaded, yes. Interesting. <laughs> uh, but the problem is, Smolder right now builds a lot of items that give health. Mm -hmm. um, ADC is building HP. Let me uh, br refresh your memory. Tank Kogma was a pretty big thing. That thing was nerfed. Um, which one? Uh, there was a Tank Varus that came out. That was nerfed. Let's see, what other ADCs take Samira? I remember the Kogma time. That was a bad time. That was, yeah. that was during my era. Yeah, it was during your era. Um, so yeah, tank ADCs usually get nerfed. Um, so Smolder building Bruiser items is probably going to get nerfed soon, but right now, it is beyond broken. Um, so yeah, going to be kind of difficult to deal with. The Nico being picked up, though. That's going to be interesting. I love seeing Pop Blossoms. Those can change an entire team fight. The Talia, though... As a counter pick in the mid lane is actually not terrible. Um, she can kind of block the rocket belt dash with her minefield. The not. Oh wow. Okay, yo, is this? Are we playing in like the LCK or something? This is like LCK level drafting here. Uh, cool. Well, I mean, they have literally the most meta comp you can possibly think of. When it comes to quite the, Saints. the opposite from what we saw in the last game. Yes, quite the opposite. Uh, they have a good balance of CC, of um, damage, and uh, I mean the only thing that's kind of off meta is the graves. Uh, but ooh, the Yone gonna pick, be picked up for that top lane. Yone against Nar. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know how that one plays out. Yone Yummy. can get punished with the range, but uh, the team fight. Okay, team fight 100% goes towards the Saints on this draft. Uh, mm, just looking at drafts, Saints win, but if the jungle is, actually, no, no, this is a Saints win, because Kane can't play before he gets his transformation. This is probably going to be a blue Kane angle, because he, they need an assassin to lock down the smolder. Um, so Kane is going to have to gank a ranged laner, so he's going to have to gank top, because him ganking bot is probably going to be right around suicide at this point. Because uh, he already knows that the enemy juggler is going to be playing around his bot, right? So he needs to be playing and getting his blue orbs from the Nar, Because mm. Nar's technically ranged. Uh, although he can also give blue orbs when he's in his melee form. Uh, so it's going to be kind of difficult to path here. I, but I suspect it's going to be a bot to top pathing uh, with prioritization around the top lane. But yeah, if that smolder gets ahead, even just a little bit, it's going to be over. It very well could be, but if uh, University of Windsor plays anything like we've been seeing them play earlier on in the series, then they definitely have a chance at keeping things going. Uh, the Saint lineup, like you said, is pretty, it's pretty damn strong. 
but University of Windsor has shown us so far that they can play around the rule book. They can defy the laws of physics. They can. The laws well, of okay, physics in not, this case. Yeah, it, being, in game, in game. Being the laws of <laughs> in game physics, the, it, the draft. They can defy the laws of the draft and they can really make the Saints have a run for their money here. But so far, based off of the drafts and the lineups, what do you think the general strategy will be for both of these teams? Uh, Saints need to play around Smolder, period. And then, hmm, looking at it, they're going to have to play around, the, the U Windsor is going to have to play around the Kaisa, mm -hmm. trying to peel for her. So we're probably going to be seeing a little bit more of a defensive Nico, not really going for those engages, leaving the engages to the Thresh, and then the Pop Blossom as a follow-up to make sure everybody stays. Um... But the Yone is probably going to come in and try. They have a lot of CC. The the U Windsor has a lot of CC to play around. But at the same time, they don't have Smolder. <laughs> this, again, that seems to be the deciding factor here. Whichever team has Smolder tends to just win the game. But I feel like as long as they play their composition the way that they want to, you know, Thresh and the Kaisa in the bottom lane, I think they do represent the ability, especially as we head into the mid game, they represent the ability to get pickoffs that really matter. And yes. even if your small is building up tank items, there's only so much they can do when they're really facing the full force of a team pouring everything that they can into this poor little dragon. So as we get ready to head into this next and final game of the series, the Battle of Windsor comes to a head in this last game. So ladies and gentlemen, get your seat belts buckled in, locked in, do whatever you need to do to make sure you don't go flying out of your seats because this last game is potentially going to be a crazy one. Yeah, we're seeing the invade here uh, onto the blue buff for the Saints. I don't know how this one's going to play out. I don't think, in theory, that they're going to be... Because they should be starting bot side. So, yeah, the blue buff is completely clear. Uh, Kane going to probably steal that one. And then lock it down. I th There is a possibility, however low, that the... Uh, oh, no, they're not even going to steal it. They're just going to ward it. Wait, what? Uh, okay. I guess that's an option. Uh, as here, yeah, the Saints got to get spotted on vision, but all they're seeing is the mid laner being in mid lane and the top lane heading to the top lane, so it's not much information that you really needed. Uh, but now, yeah, okay, so Kane is going to start top side. Okay, I didn't expect that. So Kane starting top side means he's probably going to path uh, bot and going to go and prioritize his bot lane, which does mean that we end up having the Graves pathing away from his bot lane. So. Botland's going to have to play a little bit more safe here. Uh, we're going to have to be seeing how Smolder's going to be playing this game and how exactly he's going to proceed. Uh, because, I mean, he needs to get his farm, right? But getting that farm, the, the farm might be a little bit hard with those Thresh hooks being a threat. Uh, but Maokai Q actually connecting there. That was kind of interesting. Kaiser should be playing that close to Maokai. Uh, but Maokai starting Q is kind of interesting. Usually you would start W just in case mm -hmm. to peel for your ADC. Uh, but I guess the Q does work if you play right next to him. Uh, but yeah. Now, here. Gabe, uh, oh, actually, before that little action there kind of kicks off, in fact, it could be a little bit scary. The Maokai here is facing quite a bit of pressure. But uh, what I was going to ask is a, a relevant question here. Just this is the newest champion in the game. So for anybody who might be unfamiliar with what he does, care to break it down for us? Yeah, okay. So Smolder, his Q is First infinitely one going scaling. Top as well, by the way. Ooh. Kill up top. Yasuo gets the kill. Ooh, no. Poor Nar. Um, so, yeah. He infinitely scales uh, with damage. And hold on here. There's a gang coming in. As you can see, that fireball affecting with, I think it's a 50 to 60% slow, uh, which is, is absolutely insane on an ADC. I mean, Jin's traps at max level do 50%. Or, yeah, it's 50%. The so, dragon privilege is crazy. Yeah, dragon privileges are crazy. Um, mom diff, I guess. But yeah, here, oh, Maokai actually going to get picked up by the Kai'Sa, but Graves going to execute her as revenge. And I think, yeah, Smolder going to get his first kill onto Thresh. I think that was even the Fireball uh, dealing that damage. So, the, Smolder did pop Ghost, though. Uh, so, a little bit of a sacrifice needed to get that kill. 
But again, I mean, Smolder here, uh, I think he's getting on to, yeah, getting on to 20 stacks. Uh, so his uh, Fireball upgrade is going to be coming online soon. Gonna get a little bit bigger, uh, allowing him to farm even faster. Usually, you want to aim for around the 20 minute mark. By the 20 minute mark, you want to have your Elder Dragon execute, which is built into his passive. Once he gets 225 stacks, uh, he gets uh, basically the Elder Dragon buff through his kit permanently. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's balanced, guys. Don't I worry. I understand your grievance with this champion now. And I think University of Windsor does as well, which is why they're already sending so much pressure in the bottom, trying to get his game to be as difficult as possible from the get-go. Yeah, and as we can see here, so I was wrong. Graves wasn't pathing topside. I think what he went for was a uh, three can't clear in his bottom quadrant, and then just went straight for the gank getting the smolder ahead being the plan here uh, as we can see it is two for two but i don't think that yasuo is going to be much of a threat in the late game unless he is monumentally fed uh but here i think smolder did opt for that um adoran's ring to start off because he does mm -hmm. have mana problems in the early game uh so he's usually going to start yeah that's the other neat ability yeah <laughs> he gets to fly over walls like every other champion uh but his flying is also a kiting tool because it attacks too um, oh yeah yeah okay it's, it's a dash that also attacks it's i i don't know it's, so wait which part of this kit allows you to get the elder dragon buff again his passive his passive so yeah. every time what happens so as he's stacking so you can see right above his icon yeah uh he's got the energized buff and he's got his like stack buff so right now he's at 29 and uh as he goes up that number uh, gives him essentially a buff. So at 225 stacks, he gets the Elder Dragon buff. Okay. I'm gonna have to kinda let that sit in. Yeah, oh, by the way, it does get it. upgraded. The more stacks he has, the higher you can execute. So you can get even more. Yeah, it's like an ASOL uh, stacks to a certain extent. Except right, well, for him, it's on every ability, not just the E. Hopefully, University of Windsor has an answer to Smolder because from the sounds of it, he's going to be quite a threat if his game is left unchecked. But right now, the pressure seems to be mostly on the top side as we have the Saints making rotations with their jungler, putting pressure on that Yasuo behind the tower. In fact, the Thresh is there too. Leave Kaisa the alone on the bottom holy. side, but Kane is going to be able to get the Void Grabs. A lot of early rotations coming out. They're playing very actively on the map on both teams. You know, like the Thresh already leaving the bottom lane to try to get some action done in the top side. The Void Grabs are going to get picked up. I think they recognize that Smolder might just kind of be a lost cause. They're just going to let this kind of let this happen. It's just not much they can do about pressure. You might as well try to have your other lanes go well in the meantime. So I think that's what they're going to be trying to go for. Uh, but as you can see, they're kind of already taking over the uh, top side and just really trying to get as many objectives as they can because they know as soon as as long as time keeps going on it's going to get gonna harder dive? and harder they will because why not you have full path, you can fly over you can kite while you're doing it it's just basically no reason not to just rush down the enemy adc <laughs> yeah i mean the adc is unintended and an unintended adc does get dove uh here luckily the kaisa does end up staying alive but yeah, you can see Smolder did get his first upgrade here um, as he's hitting the 400 stack, uh, the, the the 40 stack mark, almost at 50. He's at 49 right now. Uh, so now his fireball, instead of just being a fireball, it's a fireball that explodes an AOE. Uh, so he gets to stack faster because he gets the stack every time his fireball CSs basically. Oh no. <laughs> so usually it was just, oh, okay, it's like a Nasus Q, right? Originally it's just, okay, you last it with the, the minion with your Q, mm -hmm. you get a stack. Um, but now it's AoE, so it's an AoE Nasus Q. So now he gets just stacks better. for not just the minion he hit, but the ones around that that he also killed. So it's just, it's just better. It's just Nasus, but better. Uh, yeah, he doesn't get the life steal from Nasus passive. Why do you need life steal if you're not going to take damage anyways? Exactly, right? that's the idea. <laughs> But speaking of take damage, Talia is going to get this rotation on going and the Mom! ultimate from Smolder. Going to do enough damage to leave 
that Thresh one hit away, and Talia's gonna get that final pickoff, but in the top side now, Nari versus Yasuo is coming to a head as that flash forward oh, just needs oh, one more right click, but oh, Yasuo flashes God. back in and gets the kill on Nar. Gonna be really kicking himself after that one. Very well played over the side of University of Windsor. The Saints are, while they're having a great game for their Smolder, there's still the rest of the map you have to worry about. Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, Smolder, so one kill, two assists. And as we can see here, Gotta that flight more. coming through, going to instantly pop the Nico. The Threshold does connect, so he's got to watch out. Going to flash away from the Kaisa. Kaisa ultimate comes out, keeps her knife isn't healthy. He is leaving with not much health left. Gonna say a little of the Gromp, getting himself away. As Kaisa here, kiting the Maokai, but Maokai still nice and healthy because he didn't take much damage in that fight, given the fact that it was all tanked by Smolder. But Kaisa left with almost no health. Threshlander gonna come out and try and shield him. Talia here going to be the damage dealer as Smolder oh, stops on back. by. Gonna pick up the kill onto the Thresh and I think onto the Kaisa too Yeesh. with a 300 gold shutdown. That's 600 gold straight to um, Smolder plus the other 300 that went to him because of the Thresh and uh, another 300 from the Nico. So yeah, everybody's in danger now. Kane gonna try and oh, get a kill. Lord. Does get the kill on to the uh, Maokai. He gets out but of this. Yeah, he gets out of it. With three HP, he survives. Okay, that is very close. So yeah, here we're gonna see the essence ring oh. come out. Oh, okay. oh, spooky. I mean, the <laughs> nothing, is scared. No, nothing, nothing can really put a dampen on your spirits right now if you're the Saints. Like even okay, wow, my 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 recall got delayed a little bit longer. You just got like three kills and you survived when you really shouldn't have. Honestly. Yeah. Wait, he's not going Spear of Sojin? What? Oh yeah. By the way, I forgot to say he has both AD and AP ratios. So he yeah. also builds Leandris. That's just perfect, honestly. Yeah, I know, it's great. What might not be so perfect is the way Yasuo is really getting ganged up on in the top side. Yikes. The Saints are going to be committing uh, quite a bit of resources to get that kill, but the time might be worth it because I believe the next Void objective is spawning if it hasn't already spawned. Yep, Kirby's so are up. They are going to be, gonna, they're going to need to be able to fight for this one. It's Thresh coming up from the mid. Going to see if he can find a hook onto Talia. Slow this down just a little bit. Maybe not. Smaller's not in this fight, by the way. He's not. So University of Windsor has a chance, it seems. <laughs> gonna be dashing in, and the rocks are gonna go flying. Void Grubs are gonna fall as well. The Reeves is gonna push them back. Maokai and the rest of the Saints are kiting so well, but Nar is eventually gonna fall. Talia is doing such a good job at controlling their movement, but they aren't gonna be able to stop him from getting the Void Grubs. So University of Windsor are gonna be able to get the Dragon and the Void Grubs in this next objective timing, as well as a good amount of kills taking down Graves next. And University of Windsor, they're keeping their march going onward but on the smolder side of things it's it's, it's still looking spooky. like yeah it's still <laughs> looking like he could be a threat uh, as the game goes on well you got a 5-0 oh, and 2 smolder uh on the plus side if you get the shutdown it, it, it it'll be nice but shutting down that smolder is going to be hard as a tp actually comes out in the bot lane here uh whose tp is it kaisa wait hold on why does the adc have tp huh <laughs> Okay, that's a new one. I've never seen an ADC have teleport before, but... Wait, no, it... Wait. Kaisa doesn't have teleport? Wait. Is she playing Spellbook? No. So why was there a teleport there? Oh, it was a Nico. Nico, okay, I got bamboozled by the Nico. I got Nikoed. Nico was posing not as even Kaisa. The, not even the casters are immune to it. Nobody is safe from Nico. <laughs> but nobody is safe from the smolder either it seems these fireballs are getting more and more deadly by the second and this turret looks to be falling very soon the saints they want to try to open up the map a little bit more i believe they don't even have that much vision on the other side of the map i feel like as long as they can keep getting that vision they're able to make these smart plays but there's a fight going on they're chasing down the thresh maokai talia they're rushing him down Hopefully they're going to be able to get that pick off that they're trying for, but it looks like the Kaisa was able to get out there. Not going to be able to go down, but Nar fighting the Yasuo, pushes him into the tower. He's going to take at least one heavy hit, but going to find his way through with the minions. A nice ladder out of the action. Yeah, and here we can see the Thresh kind of wanting to go for that dive, probably, onto the onto the, yeah, onto the Gnar, because he, he doesn't have his ultimate, right? And he doesn't have any fury to get into his... Uh, Mega Nar form. So here, Yasuo just gonna be. What? 
Okay, that was really fast. Wind wall followed by a Q and a Kraken Slayer proc. Gonna burst them down. Yeah, and then you see Thresh showing up here. Uh, Nar kind of knew he was there because of the souls that were mm -hmm. kind of hanging around. Uh, but yeah, we can see here Yasuo diving, forced to flash actually. Uh, the Thresh hook not gonna connect onto the Nar, but he will eventually fall to the cane on the other side of the map though. Here, Kaisa Ultimate does come out to try and get her away from the Maokai, but the Maokai is going to follow her with the Twisted Advance, and Smolder's gonna get that kill right under the turret. Uh, and there's one plate left on that turret too. Smolder's gonna get all five plates. Oh, that is a very, very fed baby dragon. He's gonna be a huge threat that University Winds is gonna have to answer as this game goes on. But the next dragon's coming up and I feel like the Saints are gonna be able to at least get this one as well as the Rift Herald. As long as they maintain this pressure that they have on the map, it should be pretty easy. It should be a cinch to get it. But with them oh. losing Kane now, Mom. it's gonna be damn near guaranteed that the Saints are gonna be able to get these next objectives unless this Thresh is gonna be able to somehow get the steal yeah, trust with the hook. And it's most likely gonna be going okay, the way of not. the Saints. And whether or not they push up to maybe even try taking down the mid tower, or if they just want to push straight for the Rift Herald, that's going to be the next decision they're going to have to make. But almost, oh, it was close. Honestly, I don't even think that would have been a good thing for them because that would just be bringing the threat to them. <laughs> so uh, maybe it's like a little bit of a blessing in disguise that he missed that one. Now, though, I think the Saints just have to keep their feet on the gas pedal. They don't want to be pushing too fast because the Smolder's not quite an un unkillable threat just yet, but you do want to utilize the power that he has to make the game easier for the rest of your team. Yeah, so we can see here, Smolder got the next upgrade on his fireball now. Not only does it explode in AoE, but there's a sub explosion. It's like a cluster grenade. Uh, it explodes and then it explodes again a little bit further away. So yeah, that's gonna be terrifying during the team spot fight. Speaking of team fights, there's a pretty big one right now going on. Pop Blossom going to land, but not hit anybody as Smolder picks up the first kill onto the Nico that missed the Pop Blossom. And then, ooh, Maokai gonna pick up the Kaisa. Not exactly ideal, but that's fine too as Talia picks up the, uh, the Oswo and they just have to fall back now. They can't really take that fight. Uh, not a good situation. The Smolder just back to farming, doesn't even care about taking the Herald. I need my stacks. Speaking of stacks, I think he's at yeah, 152. Just gonna damage that turret, try and get that mid turret down. And look at the unholy amount of damage oh, that that Thresh has wow. taken. He literally called in his bomb just to wipe out the wave. <laughs> It's the play to make, you know, you want to get these sacks, you want to get this CS, and you know oh, that even without that your ultimate, you're still a huge threat. Just as oh I mentioned, God. able to fend off basically all of you of Windsor's pressure that they're putting forward here with Maokai and Graves. This is going to be quite easy for Smolder to pick up these kills. Graves ultimately going to fall, however, but a lot of gold swinging into Smolder's pockets. Yeah, I mean... Uh, he like he doesn't even have to do anything he just presses Q and the team fights over because that Q deals so much damage it is ridiculous and here he's gonna get the Navari quick blades and eventually even the spear of Sojin I believe no he's going for an LDR wait what is he going full damage smolder no tankiness I think it could work out for him so far. Hasn't been facing a lot of pressure on the side of, you know, University of Windsor. But even when he has been taking it, been able to get out of them so consistently, especially with the ability to fly away from any threat coming your way while also killing them, it's it seems pretty safe to bet that you're going to be able to survive most of the engagements that are coming your way, especially when you have a Nar and a Talia on your team. Even the Graves, basically every champion on Saints side is going to be able to deal with any threats addressing the Nar or the uh, Smolder pretty consistently. So I feel like just committing for the damage might be a pretty solid play. Yeah, the only reason that I'm kind of scared of the damage play is that the Kane, right, with the insane amount of damage that he can dish out eventually, mm -hmm. uh, could it could be nice to have that extra 300 health from the Spear Surgeon. But here he doesn't seem to even want to go for it as the Twisted Advance does come out. Smolder calls for his mom, and mom wraps up the Thresh. Talia gonna kill the cane. I mean, Smolder didn't do anything there. He just went, Mom! Come pick me up, I'm scared. And yeah, mom decided to kill Thresh. 
Just Collateral free. damage, I guess. Kind of like allowance, you know, just free money for enforced troubles, and it's gonna be all to get all these little interactions, all these little gold pickups, all these little last hits. They're gonna add up to make this smolder uh, an obnoxious threat to deal with, almost as obnoxious as that scream you just made. My ears are still recovering from it. <laughs> uh, but now, Thresh oh. hopefully trying to get that hook again, but the Reeve is all he can do. The Saints are pushing forward for another fight. The knockup coming outside of University of Windsor, but it's not going to be allowing the follow-up. Nico is going to go down. Thresh is going to be next to follow. Oh my Graves, god, that fireball damage. Not even going to go down yet. That cane's in danger. <laughs> he is in danger now, the cane, but not even going to be able to find that Graves before he goes down, and he was so low. The Saints are just completely walking all over the side of University of Windsor right now. The Nar chasing forward the Yasuo. Going to get the knockup, but there's not going to be any real follow-up. He has to flash over the wall, but Smolder was there to pick him up, getting a double kill. A penta kill! A penta kill! When? <laughs> Where? How? Well, one, two, three in the mid lane. He I, got the wow. Kaisa. Yeah. And, well, yeah. Yeah, he got he got three in the mid lane. Kaisa was uh, between top and and uh, mid, and then now he gets the Oswo. A surprise Penta coming out in this game, and it seems to be it's the case. It's thirteen and O Smolder. That it's it's <laughs> this game might be wrapping up soon, if I'm being honest. So remember what I said in draft: whatever team has Smolder wins. I said that, and you confirmed it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> when, when rule, present exhibit A. When a rule is simple, it usually means it's correct. And smolder equals win is a is a rule that uh, that I can get behind. It's it's what's easy to understand, and it seems to be uh, working so far for the Saints. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so they just much. want to keep up their pressure. Obviously, as long as they don't feed, I feel like the Saints are going to have this pretty under wraps. But you know. If there's anything University of Windsor can do to put this game back in their favor, what would it be here? Uh, kill the Smolter? If you can do that? I don't think you can do that, though. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to kill the Smolter, but the Smolter is kind of the only thing, right? Because Smolter just has so much peel. He can flap away. His W has an insane slow, so you can't really get close to him. And yeah, here Thresh gets caught out. He's just gonna He's gonna sneeze on him, he's gonna fly over him and kill him in the process. Like, mmm What is this? <laughs> like I get it, okay, he's cute, but he's also overloaded. It's quite the kit he has, but University wins are demonstrating what I was kinda hinting at before. I feel like if they just play Oh no, mom's gonna- Oh smolder. my god, 604 damage? They still have a chance to really come back in. It's as long as they're not initiating into him. Uh, they should be able to still play around the map. As you can see, Yasuo in the bottom lane there, he's gonna get gone on by two. Whether or not he's gonna be able to escape this, no, he is gonna take him down eventually. But I feel like with the issue that University of Windsor is facing right now, their best option might be, I'm not sure, like I mentioned before, you can't even really focus down the sides, like the, the enemy, uh, the other champions on the side of uh, St. Clair College because they all do such a good job of playing their own game. You know, Graves is evasive, Anna is also really burst damage, Nar also evasive, a lot of burst damage, and CC as well. Talia can fly halfway across the map, um, push you away, do a lot of damage to you. In the meantime, Maokai, one of the best supports in the game, you don't want to engage on him yet, and he's never going to be by himself either. If you're engaging on a Maokai, something's wrong because there's probably <laughs> three other champions waiting for you. So if you're can't engaging even play on the Maokai, why are you engaging on a tank? That's what he wants. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not a lot they can really do um, for the other champions on the side of the Saints. I think they really have to rely on getting one really solid fight and playing oh, off the no, momentum the that King. I can bring them. But the Saints are going to have to make a mistake first, and they haven't done so yet. Uh, it's hard to make mistakes when you have a smolder on your team. That really, the only mistake you can make is not picking him, and the Saints didn't make that mistake. Yeah, I mean, the Kane has two items right now. The Smolder 250, has three. 251. He has the funny buff. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's... Yeah, 22 minutes, Elder Dragon buff? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, hold on, though. They need to watch out. They need to end this fast, because right now... Oh, beautiful Gnar ultimate. Oh, Smolder picking up kill. a triple with his mom. Make Quad. that a quadra. Oh, wait, no. Is that a quadra? It was a quadra, I believe. Or maybe... A, no, that's a triple, triple because... Yeah, you're right. Wait, why was there four people in the kill feed then? Oh, oh yep. Make that a... That's a quadra kill now. Yep, that's the quadra. 
And wait for it. Maybe. Wait for it. That's, that's, that's another that's an penta. Un unofficial pentakill. Unofficial pentakill. Uh, so a triple kill into a double kill. Three plus two, that's five. And two and one plus one is two. That's the score of the Saints in this match here. Gonna go 2-1 against University Yikes. of Windsor, taking the series in a quite a dominant fashion. The uh, the smolder ending things, uh, you know, in a pretty suffocating manner, which is ironic because he's all about fire and fire doesn't like to be suffocated, but the Saints definitely well, suffocate. Fire is here. suffocating though. But the smoke, eventually. Yeah. But in any case, University of Windsor, they had their own fire extinguished tonight after that third and final game. But all the other games they played, including this one, they demonstrated a caliber of skill that is still respectable and admirable, as well as humbleness, decorum, and respect. We always love having these players here, sure. and it's always a nice time to put on an event and put on a show for everybody in the audience. So. But that last game under our belts, I would say today was was definitely a success. It was definitely a success. There were some up and ups and downs. Mm -hmm. uh, the Saints had really good drafts in that third round. The second round was neat, but the draft was kind of scuffed. <laughs> like I, yeah. the draft looked great because it was like they're all flex picks. But then you realize where those flex picks were going, and you were saying, "But wherever they go, they're in a losing lane." Basically. So it's neat that you have all these flex picks, but they don't like they don't <laughs> have any There's no base to there's play. There's no off win of. for your flex pick, right? Because like mm. usually, oh yeah, we picked Gragas because he can flex on four lanes. But like the four lanes that they picked that you can place that Gragas in are losing lanes. <laughs> so your Gragas is still useless anyways, and it's that same synergy, right? They had five flex picks, but None of them were in winning lanes, independently mm -hmm. of where they placed them. Which, I mean, it's kind of surprising, but I guess when you have enough champions like League of Legends does, eventually that can just happen. Um, but yeah, so that second draft was kind of eh. The third draft, well, I mean, uh, Smolder wasn't banned. Need I say more? <laughs> no, and, not really. <laughs> yeah, the first one, the Smolder was banned, and we kind of saw that like push back and forth. Mm -hmm. That one was a lot closer. Um, but yeah. Second game was slightly less close, but I think both teams still, it was close enough that there was a competition level there. Last For game, sure. very one-sided, the side of... The side player. of Smolder. It was Smolder-sided. Smolder That's it. <laughs> very it, was, it, it was not Saints-sided. It was Smolder-sided. Period. <laughs> but yeah, with... Oh, in fact, a little bit of a replay here. You can see how the fight kind of ended up. That ultimate just completely wiping out uh, basically the entirety of University of Windsor. The second pentakill of the series. And uh, it was quite a sight to behold but yeah, for like sure. I said ladies and gentlemen the action here has finally come to rest we're still feeling the effects of all the chaos that ensued but while I still have your attention, I want to definitely thank you for tuning in. Thank everybody in the audience for coming out to show support for either of the teams or both of them. Just in general, being here and a part of the audience makes everything so much more exciting. So thank you all for coming out. Uh, thank you to our sponsors for sure. Oh, yes. You know, Tim Hortons, uh, Subway, HyperX, the St. Clair College Alumni Association, and the Saints SRC. So thank you for making these shows and productions possible. And thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Ari. Thank you for and having thank me. Thank you, Amanda, in the back for helping everything be possible as well. But as we're wrapping up the stream, is there anything you'd like to say to the lovely people at home? I don't think so, no. I mean, wow. I think you covered literally everything. So that's well, nice. That's uh, have a good game in your solo queue games. Because I'm going to assume you're probably going to play. <laughs> have a good night. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. What is it? Tomorrow, we have Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, and Omega Striker. So that was Ooh. one more thing I forgot to mention. So if you want to watch all that action, be sure to stay tuned tomorrow. Follow our social media. Stay tuned with everything we're doing. And like I mentioned, I hope you have a great night. Take care.